Guys, here with a new video for the channel. I hope you like it. And if you like it, don't forget to leave your powerful like Supreme God level, comment, and subscribe. Now, without further ado, get comfortable. Let's begin. At the end of the Tournament of Power, the Saiyan Goku made a great team with the Emperor of Evil, Frieza. They were able to take over the great victory of Universe 7, while the Android 17 had asked to revive all the universes, after a while, Frieza had returned to planet Earth accompanied by a powerful Saiyan. Today, son Goku, you will be defeated by a being of the same race, because he has much more potential than you, and is even more powerful than you. Don't say stupid things, Frieza. I've been able to reach the Ultra Instinct. Even you won't be able to face me, so get out of here! How is it possible that there are more Saiyans? I thought the last pure-blooded Saiyans were Kakarot and I. Your father, King Vegeta, exiled us because he was afraid of the power of Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan. But thanks to Mr. Frieza, we can have our revenge. Prince Vegeta, with a great speed, would try to end the life of Broly's father, but Broly, with his great power, was able to grant him an incredible blow, which made Vegeta retreat a few meters because the power of the fist was overwhelming. Apparently, I've used the Super Saiyan to beat you. Feel honored. Vegeta would access the Super Saiyan, the battle would become much more even. However, the incredible adaptation of Broly was unreal, since at every step of the battle he was able to get above Vegeta. Broly's anger would exceed the limit of his emotions so that at that instant Broly would get out of control, accessing the legendary Super Saiyan. No, Broly! Stop! Stop! Don't keep releasing more power! Even all his father's words were in vain, as Broly's power continued to increase. So much so that even Goku would put on a very serious look. Where did you get such powerful warrior from? Vegeta will have to merge since even with the Super Saiyan Blue, we'll not be able to cope with it. Don't give me orders, Insect. You know I hate merging with you. While both Saiyans were arguing, Broly with a great speed was able to throw hundreds of energy spheres. Since his power had to be expelled, Goku and Vegeta with great difficulty were able to dodge all the energy attacks. But Broly with it, were a, if you were a beast, would take Vegeta's face, sinking it with incredible force. Goku with a kick would try to move it away, but was not able to do anything to him. Vegeta, when accessing the Super Saiyan Blue Evolution, was able to free himself, but with a great difficulty. Damn, Kakarot. Alright, let's do the fusion. Apparently, we have no other alternative. Both Saiyans quickly threw a combined attack towards Broly, creating a large smoke screen, quickly merging, appearing as the powerful Vegeta. I'm neither Goku nor Vegeta. I'm known as the Beast Tamer, and I'm the one in charge of finishing you, damn beast. The battle of both warriors was incredible. The whole planet Earth trembled. Even their powers reached the planet of the god Beerus. Hey, Wiss, let's go immediately to Earth. The powers that seem to be released are on another level. I could dare to assure that overcoming most of the gods. As you old, Mr. Beerus, at this moment, we're heading to the planet Earth. Both deities would come to the planet Earth at a great speed. Meanwhile, the battlefield was full of lava volcanoes because their fists were able to create a few volcanoes. I'd love to have a more time to give you good manners, but I don't have time for this, so I'll finish with a single attack. Gogeta would access the Super Saiyan Blue, with which he would join his hands to perform a powerful attack. Broly, without being left behind, in the same way, he would begin to channel a large part of his power to be able to face the power of Gogeta. However, the clash of both attacks created several dimensional portals. Gogeta was able to super Broly, but when Broly was about to die, he would be teleported, thanks to the desire of the Dragon Balls, but to the planet Earth. A great portal would approach, so Gogeta would rise in the atmosphere of the planet, and with a great power, he was able to reduce the size of the portal, not being dangerous for planet Earth. Well now, I have to go back to the planet, so that this dimensional portal doesn't absorb me. 
Gogeta, with a great speed, would begin to fly towards the planet, but unfortunately the fusion would end at the precise moment, so both warriors were about to be absorbed. Goku, with great speed of reaction, would throw an attack at Vegeta, taking him away from the portal. So Goku would be absorbed, and at the moment, that portal would disappear. Vegeta, being without energy for that battle against Broly, would fall to planet Earth very badly injured. Damn, Kakarot, where the hell have you been sent? My body hurts. I'm not even able to move a single one of my arms. My bones are all shattered. Meanwhile, in a very different dimension, we can observe a small blonde-haired warrior who calls himself Meliodas, the leader of the Seven Deadly Sins, who was in his tavern talking with a beautiful woman named Merlin, who was part of the same group. But Captain, Escanor's power has increased in an amazing way. Even at this moment, he is fighting against one of the commandments. It'll be better to go and find out if everything is in order, since the power of Escanor at noon is incredible. Even I in my assault mode would not be able to defeat him. But when both beings were about to be transported to the Great Battle of Escanor and the Galand Commandment, from Heaven's Son Goku would fall near the tavern as if it were an asteroid. He would create a great disaster all around, which would attract the attention of Merlin Meliodas. Even Hawk, who was in the tavern sleeping, would come out to observe what happened. But if it's a person, he must be dead, because at that speed and that power, no one would be able to survive. But they were shocked when they observed the warrior moving slowly, but everything around him was covered with blood. Where am I? Damn, I've exceeded my body. I'm not even able to move. Goku would be out of combat, so Meliodas nimbly was able to enter the crater carrying him and put him on a bed so he's able to recover. Merlin, what happened to Escanor? Do you think you're capable of being able to cure him? Answering your first question, the result was obvious, Escanor. He was able to defeat both commandments. While your second question, I'm not clear, since this warrior exudes absolutely no magic, so I don't know how he's alive. But Merlin, that's impossible. Everyone has a little magic. Even if they're not sorcerers, they're born with that ability. I understand, Captain, but the weird thing is that his entire internal system is healing him on his own. Because when I tried to heal him with my magic, I was completely rejected. I have a lot of questions. What a strange subject. Meanwhile, on the planet Earth, Beerus and Wiss arrived, watching as Vegeta was lying on the ground on the verge of death. Wish him away. He's about to die. Wiss, with his staff, was able to heal him quickly, so after a few minutes, Vegeta was able to react, standing up. Mr. Bit Wiss, Wiss, thank you for your help, otherwise I would have died. What happened there, Vegeta? And why am I not able to feel the power of Son Goku anywhere? Vegeta was able to explain everything that happened, from the battle with Broly to when Goku was swallowed by that dimensional portal. This is a problem. It won't be easy to, at all to fix. Why does Mr. Beerus say that? Wiss is able to open dimensions with his staff, so it shouldn't be anything complex to find Kakarot. Mr. Vegeta, I will explain it quickly. Opening a dimension is simple, you are correct. But something more complex is to look for a dimension, since there are millions of dimensions similar to being, and millions that even have nothing to do. This is even for the High Priest Daishaken-sama would be complicated. Damn insect, hope you don't die and survive. Returning to Goku, he began to react to noticing the place where he was. Ah, where am I? I don't feel the key of any of my friends. My head hurts a lot. But if you've woken up, this is a surprise, since you've only been resting for 12 hours and your injuries seem serious. A talking pig? Where the hell am I? If this is a dream, someone wake me up. Stop yelling! Haven't you heard of a talking pig? Well, now that you say it, you're right. In Everest 10, there was a pig-like being that was able to talk. You know, most of the destroying gods are animals. Hawk, what happened? We heard some screams, but... Oh, I see you've woken up. How are you feeling? Well, apparently you're the ones who helped me. I'm very grateful to you. My name's Son Goku, or I'm also known as Kakarot. You have a very weird name, but that doesn't matter. I'm Meliodas, and I'm the owner of this tavern, and she's my sister Merlin. Nice to meet you, but I have several questions. Sorry to be so direct. Sure, don't worry, since I also have several questions since I don't understand anything. How is it possible that there's absolutely no magic in your whole body, since that's indispensable to survive? So you give me two alternatives, you're a robot or you're from another planet. <laughs> Merlin, stop saying stupid stuff. How are you going to say that to our guest? Magic? They don't use key here? Where the hell am I? 
Meliodas' look would change from smiling to a more serious one because he didn't understand what he meant. What do you mean? Do you master another kind of magic called key? This isn't magic. It's the energy that's used from where I'm from. But to tell the truth, I'm not able to feel the power of any of my friends. We don't know where you're from, but you just fell from the sky with great speed and power. Now I remember. Vegeta and I merged to defeat Broly, but the fusion, when finished, was absorbed by a portal that was near the planet Earth. Merlin, is what you're saying possible? Is it possible to travel between dimensions? I don't know, Captain. But to be honest, it's the first time I ever heard of magic or energy called Ki. And his outfit's very different from the ones we usually wear. Uh, thank you for helping me, but I'll try to return to my dimension. Since I can't stay in this place, I have to train to become much more powerful. I understand, but well, what do you think if we have a match? Since I can't see your muscles, you must be very powerful, and I want to test your power. Captain, don't do it! It may hurt him, and we won't be able to do anything to help him. You don't have to if you don't want to, Goku. <laughs> don't worry, Marlin. This will be useful for me to stretch my muscles a bit, but surely it won't hurt you if I use my power. <laughs> You're talking to one of the most powerful beings in this whole place, so don't worry about that. Okay, then you can attack whenever you're ready. Meliodas, a little annoyed since it seemed that his opponent was underestimating him, he would throw himself quickly, starting with his great attack, but to everyone's surprise, Goku was able to dodge each one of his attacks without difficulty. Meliodas would use a little of his demonic state to be able to balance the battle a little more, but despite all his efforts, these seemed to be in vain. So you could transform! Do it! Because otherwise this battle will be very boring. But attack me! Don't underestimate me! I have realized that your power is much higher than mine, but it will not be easy for you to defeat me! If you really want me to attack you, I will! I hope you're prepared! Goku would start attacking, but he had his power at the lowest, and by this oversight, Meliodas was able to connect a powerful blow in the face of Goku, which sent him to the sky. Ah, that hurt me! Really? This is not an ordinary being! But I'll throw a Kamehameha at him to end this combat! Goku was throwing his attack, he noticed with a smile he would draw on Meliodas' face while returning to normal. Get this! Fight back! Meliodas' special ability, which was able to return any attack to twice its power, was a success, as he had successfully caught up with Goku, making him fall to the ground. Captain, I told you not to overdo it with your power, as it may end this warrior's life, and I have to examine him. But Goku, with a great leap, was able to completely pull himself together. That was amazing! You're able to return my attack at twice the power! What kind of technique is that? How are you able to move after such a big attack? Oh, that's nothing! I've suffered much more powerful attacks! Goku, what are you really like? Since you have the appearance of a human being, but for the stamina you have and the abilities, I doubt that you're an ordinary human. I don't know if they exist in this place, but I'm a Saiyan! I'm a being of a warrior race! For that reason, our bodies are designed to have much more resistance than other races. And that means you really are an alien. <laughs> well, it could be said that. Hey, Goku, wouldn't you like to join us on this great journey we have? Oh, while you find a way to get back to your timeline? Okay, I'll join you, since you seem to be nice people. But tell me, are you at war with someone? Or for what reason do they call this Travisia? We are the seven deadly sins. We're gathering this whole team as very powerful beings have broken free from a powerful seal. And we must end them before they continue to end the lives of innocent people. But how do they know that they're ending the lives of innocent people? Since, to be honest with you, I'm not able to perceive any energy. Well, that happens because the energy that you possess is very different from our energy. But I'll show you with that sphere. When Goku observed the sphere that Merlin had pointed out to him, he was able to realize how these, who would call themselves the group of the Ten Commandments, fed on the souls of the human beings to be able to recover the power that they had lost in all this time sealed. They are cursed! I have never seen such a cruel act! Feeding on the souls of others! That is no forgiveness! I swear I'll annihilate them if I have in front of them! Merlin and Meliodas were surprised to realize how the whole sky was getting dark and hundreds of rays were starting to fall around Goku. While this whole earth was shaking, that's right, it was the first time in that place such a great power was felt. This warrior will be a great help to the group of the seven deadly sins. Goku, please calm down, because if we defeat them, we'll be able to make those souls return to their owners. 
Goku would control himself, but he would still be in a great rage. So his look was very serious. Of course I'll join you. I won't allow those who human beings are treated as if they're worthless. In that case, you will be the eighth cardinal sin. With which animal or beast do you symbolize yourself? <laughs> you know, Zaru. I know they don't know what that is, but they'll find out very soon. Goku would be the eighth cardinal sin, symbolized by the Ozaru of the Supreme Power. Meanwhile, in a very distant place, there were ten beings resting. That's right, there were ten commandments. Their leader, Zeldris, would stand up. Meliodas, he has betrayed us. Being the leader of the Ten Commandments, he preferred to ally himself to the side of the goddesses, and this is no forgiveness. We will have to end him. It would be very cruel to end the life of our own brother, but he was the one who sought this inevitable end, and we will be able to do nothing with him. This was said by a peculiar white-haired warrior, who, as soon as he finished his sentence, was able to make a small bird explode, which had even mutated. I want them to be at the maximum of their abilities. Being since sealed, but for hundreds of years, we don't have our magic even at the average level of a demon. All the commandments, they began to absorb the magic of all the human beings that were around the place. Meanwhile, Meliodas was able to find Ban, the fox of the Seven Sins capital. Captain, long time no see! They both started to fight, but it was their normal greeting as Goku was about to intervene. Don't worry, that's a normal thing between them since they're best friends. Oh, I understand. <laughs> but what a peculiar way to greet each other. Captain, who is this guy? I want to introduce you to the newest member of the Deadly Sins. He's son Goku, the eighth Deadly Sin. Bon would be very surprised by the captain's response, but thinking that Goku was a weakling, he'd approach the same. I can tell that you're kind of muscular, but that doesn't define if you have the powers to be one of us. As even Holy Knights, we tried, and no one has been worthy. I can understand that you want to check my power, and for me it's fine. Let's have a little battle. This will be interesting, and I'll be able to analyze Goku a lot more since we have fought. I wasn't able to clearly see his movements. I'd never deny a battle, much less the being who would be our new partner. But you better be prepared since I'm not going to have mercy. Pan, you better not get complacent, as he is really powerful. Goku would start with a warm-up, being able to move all his limbs, Ban quickly would start attacking, being in vain, since each of his punches were not strong enough to be able to at least scratch Zoro. Zoro's punching fist! Ban's fist went to Goku's chest, but his fingers were completely shattered upon making contact with his body. Ban would quickly retreat. I realize you're a tough guy, but what do you think about this? Feast of the Hunter! Bond's power had increased in an amazing way, while Goku noticed that his power had decreased slightly. <laughs> this technique reminds me of when one of Babayuri's warriors wanted to absorb my power and I made him explode, but this being uses it much more in limited capacities. What the hell? How is it possible that you have so much power? I'm not able to move at all, and I feel like my body's gonna explode. Goku with quick movement was able to grant him hundreds of very light blows. But he had sent Bond flying with parts of his body destroyed, Goku would put on a worried look. Oh no, I've overdone it! And apparently ended his life! Well, I do now! That was a great match! And don't worry about Bond, as he's known as Bond the Immortal, so there's never a problem whatsoever. But everyone was surprised to realize as Bond, despite having recovered, kept complaining, even Merlin would try to soothe his pain with magic. The power of Goku really possesses is incredible, so much so that even the body of an immortal is able to withstand it. Meliodas had taken Bond to rest in one of the rooms of the tavern. While they were heading to the sacred land in search of Meliodas' seal power, in the course of the way, King of the Sloth Bear would meet all the warriors. So you are headed to the Holy Land. I'll be with you. Because of the return of the Ten Commandments, it will be dangerous to be apart. You're right, King, because it would be better to be united, because that way we're much more powerful and we won't stay defeated so easily. They had already reached the sacred land in which, above the head of Meliodas, a giant pearl could be observed. I hope you're ready, Meliodas, to regain all your demonic power. You have been able to complete the control of self-tests and you're worthy to reclaim what is yours again. Meliodas would remember how his tests 
of self-control were, since in front of his eyes, the woman of his life was snatched away again and again, to the point of completely controlling his emotions. The goddess was able to release all the power of Meliodas, which would begin to penetrate the whole body. Beginning to increase its power so much was the increase of magic. On this occasion, the Ten Commandments was able to feel the power of Meliodas. Now that's definitely him, since Meliodas' power was sealed by the looks of it, but he doesn't know how powerful we are. Meliodas was able to master his power completely, so he would ask to go to see the Ten Commandments. Merlin would fulfill his request by teleporting him for a few seconds. At the moment of arriving, Zeldris and Farin launched themselves against him, but it was completely in vain since Meliodas was able to dodge them with a little difficulty. They better not do their own thing, since we don't think we'll tolerate them ending the lives of innocents. They better not look for Garland, since he's been defeated by one of the eight deadly sins. Estrosa would stand up, but Merlin's technique would be activated, with which Meliodas would return to the Sacred Land. And tell me, Meliodas, how would you see in the Ten Commandments? Do you think it'll be easy or a complicated battle? The power of the Ten Commandments has always been incredible, as they are the elite of the Demon King, being equaled only to the Dark Knights. But Captain, if we first attack, with Goku's power, I'm sure we'd be able to do something. No, Ban, it's not time yet, but very soon we will. Meanwhile, Gloxina, one of the commandments, would leave together with Droll, since both were not yet able to recover all their magic. So they decided to form a tournament in which Gloxenia, being the fairy king of the past, would grant a wish to the winner of the tournament. While Droll, being a giant, would form a huge labyrinth, the deadly sins upon hearing the news would come in the same. We don't have to allow them to be able to recover all their magic, as they only do it to become more powerful. Okay, it'll be better to go and stop them. Goku is right. Likewise, we are currently, we are the deadly sins. That's right, Captain. Of course, we'll be able to do it. I'm only worried about what the tournament is at night, and I won't be able to use my power to defend myself. I feel like I'll be a hindrance. Don't worry, we're all a team, and we'll be able to help each other. That's how everyone quickly left for the tournament in which, when they arrived, they realized how the parades they were not able to cross. So, the duo of Ban and Meliodas were able to cross the wall without any effort, which would bring out a smile on Goku. <laughs> I don't know which world they've fallen into, but this is getting more interesting every time. The wall would be destroyed, but at the moment, Glaxenia would form several teams of a couple, so that they would fight among themselves. Goku, not possessing magic, would not be counted as a participant. So the combats would continue normally until the moment in which Escanor, with his great determination, was able to invoke his sacred sword Rita, which would illuminate the whole night, as if it were a great sun. But Escanor would nimbly throw his great attack against both commandments. Meliodas, this in the same way, would try to end the life of both, while everyone else would be locked up underground. No, this can't be happening. Mr. Meliodas won't be able to do anything against the two commandments. But one of the magicians was able to observe how, despite being two against one, Meliodas was beating them. But it'd be better to get out of there. When Goku was about to destroy the barrier that had them locked up, the same magician was able to teleport them very far from the place. Droll and Gloxenia! Whatever they've been promised, they will not fulfill them, so they'll die in vain. But I'll free them from their tragic fate by ending their lives myself! But Meliodas, about being able to finish with both commandments, everyone else came to the battlefield. Already having their magic to the maximum, Zeldris, the captain of the Ten Commandments, in a quick movement was able to cut off the arm of the brother Meliodas, while another commandment was able to tie his spirit to the battlefield. Chains of Fate Activation! While a blonde-haired girl would start giving him hundreds of blows, that's right, it was a special technique called Star Combo, which the more blows gave his victim, his power doubled. Meliodas would fall to the ground very badly injured, but with his mouth, he would be able to take his sword. This is the technique used against Hendrickson, but on a much larger scale. The great technique that in the past was able to finish off the demon Hendrickson, on this occasion was neutralized by a single hand of his brother, Esterosa, the commandment of love. I'm sorry, dear brother, but today you'll have to die, and I won't let you make fun of us again. Esterosa would reveal the whole story of Meliodas while his friends, thanks to the magician, were able to see and hear everything that happened. Esterosa, with one of his techniques, would begin to insert several arrows into the body of Meliodas. 
The high-level demons, we possess seven hearts, but when we're all destroyed, they have no other destiny than death. I can't help but watching this. Damn! Goku would quickly use teleportation so he would begin to move at incredible speeds, quickly reaching the battlefield, holding the hand of Estorosa. You better calm down, murderer. Right now I'm gonna finish with all you! Zeldris quickly pounced against Goku, but to his surprise, Goku with only one of his fingers was able to stop his sword. He would be upset. He would free himself from Goku's grip, so both brothers launched themselves against Goku. But Goku, by releasing his pressure a little, was able to make them all fall to the ground completely, without the hope of moving in the least. I'm not in the mood, so if you don't want to die, you better do everything I tell you, because I'm the most powerful cardinal sin of all. All the other commandments, without caring the least about Goku's words, they launched into the attack since from their point of view they were not going to allow any simple human to give them orders. One of the commandments would throw a large sphere of magic in the form of a dragon, but Goku with one of his hands disintegrated it without any difficulty. Dirai would use his combo of blows again, but against Goku it was totally in vain, since for Goku it was absolutely nothing. I have no other choice. I will use the demonic invocation, Sacrifice of Hearts. Monspi, one of the most powerful commandments, had renounced six of their hearts, exchanging them for an amazing destructive power, which would make him mutual Dirai when observing his companion would likewise use the demonic invocation. Both began to transform, while Goku watched without any concern. These warriors are absolutely nothing. Their power is compared to Gohan's power when we fight Majin Buu. They're no threat to me. Damn. I can't believe that we're the so-called Ten Commandments are humiliated by a mere human! This is unforgivable! He would try to stand up, but despite all his efforts, they were useless. While in the underworld, the Demon King was watching everything that happened being very thoughtful. I don't know how Meliodas has been able to ally himself with someone as powerful as that warrior is. But I have to end Meliodas' life as of place, so that he loses those stupid emotions. The Demon King will transmit much more power to Estorosa so that he'd be able to finish with Meliodas. I've only one chance. It must be with that damn human that's distracted by the others. One of the commands would cause a great explosion with which a great smoke screen would be formed. It's time. Meliodas dies. Demonic revelation. A gigantic dark colored sword would quickly descend towards Meliodas' chest. Goku not being able to perceive the magic clearly, he was not able to do anything. Because when he realized it was too late, that's right, the Great Sword of Estorosa was able to completely pierce him, destroying his seven hearts with a single impact. If you want to kill me, do it. But our task is done. Goku's gaze would completely cloud over. When he remembered how Meliodas had welcomed him to his house, granting him food, Goku would cry out angrily, and frustration had access to the Super Saiyan, with which he was able to make everything around him tremble, even the planet they were. This is amazing! Goku's power is able to do all this! Why do I change his hair to golden? This warrior really hides too many secrets! Goku, with an incredible great anger, would release a pressure so suffocating that he had even destroyed all the bones of the Ten Commandments. I don't know who the hell you are, but what I'm sure is that you're not human. You're something that goes way beyond that. You shouldn't be interested in what I am. They should only know that I'll be the one who'll end each of their lives. Goku, being approaching the Ten Commandments, was surprised to realize how the commandments would disappear. Damn it. Since I'm not able to master that energy called magic, they're able to escape without me noticing. Goku would return to his base state approaching Meliodas, but when he was about to arrive, the goddess Elizabeth would have him in her arms, while tears ran down her cheeks. Damn, even though I was so powerful, I wasn't able to protect Meliodas. That tragic day had passed quickly, in which everyone was in the tavern a little thoughtful. However, Ban would approach Goku. I know everyone's curious, but I'll ask. How can you change your hair from black to gold? And where have you been able to expel all that power from? Just as I've told Meliodas and Merlin, I belong to a warrior race called Saiyan, and we are able to transform and even possess the divine energy. Do you mean to say that the power of a god flows through your body? You're correct. It's my most powerful transformation. Since the Ultra Instinct, I'm still not able to completely master it. Do you think you could show us that transformation with divine energy? But can we learn it? Or that's impossible. Goku, without paying attention to what Bond said, had would start accessing the Super Saiyan Blue, with which he had illuminated everything around him in a blue color. 
while a pressure in the air felt. Even now that it's noon and my power is at its highest point, I'm not able to feel terror in the face of that pressure. And this is the Super Saiyan Blue. Goku had shown them his most powerful state so far because the Ultra Instinct was not able to access it. Son Goku, 8th Cardinal Sin, I have too many questions for you, but do you really possess the power of a god in your veins? Why do you doubt it, Marlin? I've taught them even now the power of a god. What happens that I would love to experiment with you? If you claim to have the power of a god, my new potions should have an amazing effect. But at the moment, a big explosion in the main castle would be present. So everyone quickly came to save the others. However, while Goku was quickly mobilizing, was surprised noticing how Meliodas was fighting against two commandments. At the moment of Goku approaching, he would notice how Meliodas, with his famous counterattack technique, an incredible fire dragon would return to him, which had left both commandments very badly injured. Goku, a little confused, would approach Meliodas. Meliodas, is that you? How's that possible? I saw how you died. <laughs> Don't worry, Goku. The only thing is to know that now all the sins are reunited, so there's nothing to worry about. Meanwhile, in the castle, Merlin likewise would reveal his true origin, so two of the commandments tried to escape being impossible. So Merlin of a great whirlwind was able to capture one of the commandments. However, in all this time, Meliodas had come close enough to the castle, finding the original form of Fraudin, one of the commandments, which was able to leave the body in which he was hiding for the love of the son who had that body. Meliodas, you can kill me. There's no need to fight, because I know that compared to you, your power, I'm nothing. Since Meliodas came back, I've seen him a little strange, although I don't know what it is, but I have to find out. Goku was surprised to realize how Meliodas' energy changed drastically, and with a single blow, he would pulverize his enemy. I'm sure that's not the Meliodas I know, so Goku would very slowly approach Meliodas, being both face to face. Meliodas, what happened to you? You're not like that, and if you don't give me a logical explanation, I, the 8th Cardinal Sin, will have to stop you. Son Goku, you're very important to me, but currently the power I possess won't be able to do anything to me, so you better stay out of my business. Meliodas would turn with the intention of leaving the place, but would be held by Goku's hand. Meliodas, without difficulty, would grant a big kick to the face of Goku, who was able to dodge it with great difficulty taking a little distance. I don't know what the hell happened to you, but I'm going to let them manipulate you, so I have to knock you out. Both partners began to fight, meanwhile Merlin would communicate with Ban, the fox of the seven deadly sins, and Meliodas' best friend. Ban, as an immortal being, you must go to the underworld, because every time Meliodas dies, he resurrects without his emotions, so on every occasion, he returns to be the demon he was before. Understood, but how can I get to the underworld? Hawk will be the one for you to get to the underworld. You have to look for the emotions of Meliodas and face the demon king to return. I trust you, Bon. Hawk, with a strange ability, was able to take Bon to the underworld, which was an extreme environment for any warrior, because even one minute in that place, it was a hundred years. So it was impossible for any ordinary being, but not for Bon the Immortal. So he would start looking for the emotions of his best friend, meanwhile Meliodas realizing that even with his true power, he was not able to do anything against Goku. He would take a little. Son Goku, 8th Cardinal Sin, you're powerful. But now, I'll show you the power of the former leader of the Ten Commandments and the successor to Demon King. The entire body of Meliodas would be covered with several dark marks, so that the state was called Assault Mode, or also known as the Battle State of the Leader of the Ten Commandments. Since Meliodas in that state was able to even finish off goddesses with such ease that he split them in two. Mr. Meliodas, please, what's happened to you? I know that inside all that shell is that Mr. Meliodas I love. You are of uh, such quality, Elizabeth, but it's pity that I currently feel absolutely nothing for you, but I will fulfill my promise. What promise are you referring to? I'm not going to let something bad happen to them. I'll stop you. 
This is none of your business, son Goku, but I plan to break the curses that were placed on Elizabeth and me because we are from different clans. When Goku launched himself against Meliodas, he was surprised because on this occasion Meliodas was able to dodge absolutely all his attacks and a big shadow would fall down behind Goku. So he would try to knock him out of combat, but it turned out impossible since Goku at the moment would access the Super Saiyan with which he was able to ward off Meliodas. I didn't think a guy from this place would be able to make me use one of my transformations. Apparently in my current situation, it's impossible for me to beat you. But don't worry, when I become Demon King, I want to fight with you again. I would not allow you to become a Demon King. Meliodas would disappear from the place along with Elizabeth, appearing in the castle where the three brothers would see each other again after a long time, while Zeldris was sitting on the throne of the castle. Ha 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 Brother, how long? It can tell why you've come to this place. I don't know what it is you want, but if you give me that goddess, I promise that I'll leave the position of the Demon King to you. Elizabeth's with me, and secondly, the position of Demon King belongs to me by law, so nothing and no one will be able to do anything. Both Furious Brothers rushed against Meliodas, but Meliodas, with the surprising pressure, would make them fall to the ground and they weren't even able to move. They won't be able to do anything against me, and as far as I can tell, even our teachers have returned from the Underworld. So both masters who trained Zeldris and Meliodas would make an appearance. Returning to the castle, Goku would return to his base state, but he was very intrigued. I don't know how I can help Meliodas. The technique that steals his emotions looks like when Vegeta was manipulated by Babidi. But of this world, I know absolutely nothing. Goku, I know you're very worried about Meliodas, but I'll tell you how things really went. Hundreds of years ago, the Holy War was started by Meliodas and Elizabeth. They were indirectly responsible, since it is forbidden for a demon and a goddess to form a couple. So the supreme deity, cursed Elizabeth, had to be reborn for eternity and became enamored of Meliodas again. While the demon king cursed Meliodas, every time he died, he began to lose his emotions to become the new demon king. I don't know who the hell those stupid bastards are will be, but I want to have them in front of me. I'll tear them to pieces. I won't let them keep doing this to Meliodas and Elizabeth. It's good to know that we have someone who has such great powers as yours, but for now, we'll be able to do absolutely nothing. It'll be better to return, since the castle has been completely destroyed. We cannot stay in this place. Everyone would return to the tavern, how after, after a few hours, Zeldris had in his possession the commandments of some of his companions, so Meliodas would begin to absorb each of his commandments, to become much more powerful. But at the moment of the commandments began to enter his body, an incredible power would be felt all over the place, because the power of a commandment was gigantic, so much so that even Goku had realized the power of that. We have to stop him! I can see how Meliodas' power rises in an incredible way! But all over the place, Chandler, the master of Meliodas, would start heading towards the tavern, so the whole sky would darken. I can't touch that damn goddess on Meliodasama's orders, but I can't take down her classmates' garbage so that they won't cause any more problems. Chandler would arrive in a matter of seconds towards the tavern, in which he would prostrate himself on top of everything, while Goku had felt a huge power very close to them. What is this power? Is the power of a demon capable of reaching those limits? Goku would start walking towards the outside of the tavern, realizing that everything was dark, and because of this, Skanor had lost all his power. Goku, we can now entrust you. I know you'll succeed. Goku kept coming towards Chandler. Both warriors were face to face. I can't feel any magic coming from you, so I plan to annihilate you in one fell swoop, so you won't interfere with Mr. Meliodas' plans. I want to see that if you could do it, since you are trash next to me. Goku would start squeezing his hands, so everything around him would start shaking. Due to the power he was increasing, Goku would expel his power from Super Saiyan Phase 2, which would leave everyone present very surprised, even Chandler. Just by changing the color of your hair, you won't be able to do anything to me. But Chandler, without being able to observe Goku's movement, had received a powerful blow which made him vomit absurd amounts of blood, being able to see only Goku's feet. Ugh, that hurt me too much. Now I'll teach you because we are considered the teachers of the next Demon Kings. Chandler would expel a large part of his power, with which the sky would begin to turn from thunderstorms. 
Goku, be careful. Since Chandler's power is even greater than the Demon King's power, you will be able to face him on your own. <laughs> I can tell that you still don't know anything about my Merlin. These bastards are not worthy to even observe the limit of all my power. Furious Chandler would pounce against him, but to his surprise, Goku was able to dodge each of his attacks. So Goku, with a powerful blow, had made him fall to an already destroyed part. While both were fighting, the Demon King was watching everything with incredible. Who is this bastard? Even his power is much bigger than Chandler's power. If everything goes on like this, I'm sure we'll have to turn the original demon. And that's the last thing I want. Returning to Meliodas, he was still at rest because he was not able to stabilize all the commandments. For his part, Esterosa, in the same way, had the intention of absorbing several commandments, but before he was able to absorb them, Grother, the cardinal sin of lust and symbolized by the goat, would reveal his true identity to Esterosa, who was the most powerful archangel male. But hundreds of years ago, Grother was able to use all his magic to change the same story and end it to the Holy War, because if Meliodas joined the goddesses, the balance would be broken, and they needed a warrior just as powerful as Meliodas. Seldris realized the true identity of Esterosa was heading to where he was, and before he was able to absorb more commandments, would dead to Daria, because the two of the commandments, his power had grown in an incredible way. Zeldris, regardless of the memories he had with his great sword, was able to annihilate him, leaving only Mael, the original Archangel. <laughs> In those conditions that Mail is in, she'll surely die, but it's not my problem. Now only three commandments are left to Meliodas. Zeldris, at an amazing speed, quickly resorted to where Meliodas was, granting him three commandments of Esterosa, and even granting him his commandment. I have done what you, father, asked me. Now we're just waiting for Meliodas to be the new Demon King. Meanwhile, in the underworld, in that place hundreds of years had already passed, we could observe a Ban with an extremely long beard. I finally found you, Captain. Now we'll be able to get you out of this damn hell. Bon had found Meliodas as if it were a child, and it was the emotions, so both quickly began with their great plan to get out of the underworld and help all the other companions on the battlefield. However, the last battle was about to approach since Goku was about to end Chandler's life. He himself disappeared from the place, arriving at the castle in terrible condition. Chandler, what happened to you? Who has the necessary power to leave you in these conditions? I can't believe it. Chandler would be quickly treated with demonic energy so that he would be able to recover all his energy. Meanwhile, Meliodas, by possessing the Ten Commandments, would form a big cocoon, but this time it was much bigger. Finally, the birth of a new Demon King is about to begin. On the other hand, in the tavern, Goku was furious, so they decided that they would be the attackers this time. The warriors would get ready to be able to face them. The managers would be Goku, Merlin, and Escanor, who were with the resistance of the deadly sins. Goku, with the help of teleportation, was able to arrive in a matter of seconds, observing absolutely everything in the big cocoon in which Meliodas was. I swear I'll finish every one of you bastards! You are very powerful, but this will be a two-on-two -two battle since Chandler has informed us of the weak point of the guy who came in the name of Escanor. That's right at the moment the whole place would go dark, so Scanner's musculature had completely disappeared, being nothing more than a hindrance. And now, yes, we'll be able to form the original demon. Original demon? I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Hundreds of years ago, the Demon King created the original demon, but by his power being so great, he tried to reveal himself. So we were separated and given the task of training the Underworld Princes to be worthy of becoming Demon Kings. Both masters had successfully merged, so the sinner would appear the original demon, whose power was extremely overwhelming, even for Goku. With the power of the two Super Saiyans, I'll have no hope of doing anything against this bastard. I'll have to take my power to a higher level. Goku would start screaming, so the whole place was shaking. That's right, Goku's hair would start growing while everything around him was destroyed. But it was absolutely nothing for the cocoon that Meliodas was in. Meanwhile, in the underworld, both warriors met Hawk's brother with Wild, the three being in front of the Demon King. They started with a great fight in which Wild had fallen on the battlefield, but it had been the perfect opportunity for Ban, the fox of the Seven Deadly Sins, to be able to get out of that place. With the bastard out of the place, it'll be much harder for you to get out, Meliodas. Ha <laughs> I don't think that's like you, father, because if one attacks you from the inside and another from outside, we'll be able to defeat you. 
Do you even know what my plan is? That's right, since the Ten Commandments are only an extension of your power, what you really want is to have a powerful and young body again. Goku had been able to release all his power in a great light. It could be observed how Goku had access to Super Saiyan 3 while Ban, at their time of arrival, would realize as his beloved Elaine was about to be annihilated by several demons of lower rank. Does anyone dare lay a hand on my beloved? Bon, with a single movement, was able to end the life of the demons that were walking towards Elaine. That's right, the Fox of the Seven Deadly Sins was back. Bon, the Immortal. Ban would take Elaine in his arms, while all the demons that were nearby would be completely annihilated. Meanwhile, on the battlefield, Goku and Super Saiyan 3 had a pretty even battle with the original demon. However, all over the place, a big storm would appear, while in the same way, an amazing power could be perceived all over the place. A power that this time would even leave Goku very surprised. Is that the power of Meliodas? It's a gigantic power! Nothing compared to when we first faced. That's right, the Demon King was able to control all the Ten Commandments. So his body had undergone a great change, and his power had skyrocketed in an incredible way. Ha 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 ha! I finally have a new body! Now if even you won't be able to face me so long without seeing you, original demon! My lord, how long? And make a big apology for the last time I tried to reveal. Don't worry! Th because thanks to you, we've been able to keep this warrior out. But today will finally come the day of his death. Meanwhile, Bon would notice how Elaine's essence was beginning to disappear because she had resurrected by a commandment. I don't mind ceasing to be immortal, and I'm not going to let you leave my side one more time. So I have to use the Fountain of Youth to bring you back to life? I will. Ban would begin to channel the entire Fountain of Youth into his hand while remembering how he had met Elaine, the protector of the Fountain of Youth. You risked everything for me, and I'll do it for you anyway. Ban, by using the power of the source, was able to keep Elaine. However, Ban the Immortal had lost his immortality, so Elaine, a little upset, would get in front of Ban. Do you even know what you've done? You're stupid! My life's worthless if we all die! Bond would take her in his arms, not allowing her to keep talking. I don't care if I have to die or go to the same hell. For you, I would do it one in a million more times. Elaine would blush at Bond's words, but despite being a very romantic moment, a loud rumble would be felt near both of them, and Bond would be a little surprised to realize how it was Goku who was getting up with multiple wounds on his body. Ah, it, it hurt me too much. I have to quickly finish with that demon, because if he gets together with Meliodas, I'm sure I'll have several problems. Damn it, that king was able to take over the captain's body. Is it that Meliodas? If he was the one who absorbed all the commandments. You're correct. Captain Meliodas abolished them, but the Ten Commandments, they're fragments of the true power of the Demon King. So to unite them all, it is only to grant him a new body. I know that Meliodas is very resistant, and he must keep fighting to recover his body. So right now I'll defeat you to weaken you enough. The original demon had rushed against anyone else. However, Goku stood in front of the original demon. However, his gaze had completely changed. What the hell's going on? Even the look of this guy's completely changed, and it generates an incredible terror in me. Even my legs are shaking. You're a powerful guy. I never thought I would have to use this power in this world. Goku, with a great blow, was able to make him completely retreat, with which the original demon had suffered incredible damage because the power of that blow had been so much that it had destroyed most of his organs. Damn, you were holding me back? Of course I was holding back. Even I still have two transformations that I don't use, since they're not worthy of seeing the divine power that I possess. The original demon, with a lot of anger, would start lashing out with his two swords. But the result would be the same, since Goku was effortlessly able to dodge his attacks while Bon was face to face with the Demon King. It's amazing that you're able to stand in front of me without being bent by my great pressure. From Meliodas' body, an incredible pressure would be released just as the air became toxic. All the other deadly sins took refuge in a barrier created by King. Bon, it doesn't matter that you're immortal. If you're in that toxic air for too long, the Fountain of Youth won't be able to do anything for you. It's a pity that he's no longer immortal, as he used all the power of this source to revive Elaine. That means that if Bond dies, this time he'll do it forever. 
The Demon King would realize that Bond was able to withstand his great pressure because he'd been able to enter the underworld, in which the pressure was hundreds of times more powerful than that of that place. I could tell that you because to withstand my pressure, but in the case I'll have to end your life with a clean fist. <laughs> That's only if you're able to achieve it, since even one of your most powerful demons is about to be defeated. That's right, Goku had the original demon against the ropes, which this time he was no longer able to do absolutely anything. Goku, with great anger, would create an energy sword, with which he would completely dismember him. It's time to end you, you miserable! Goku would take a great impulse to the sky, and with descending at a great speed, he would charge two spheres of energies with which he was able to evaporate the original demon. But moments before ending his life, the original demon undid this fusion, so Chandler and Kusak would be sent hundreds of kilometers by such a bestial attack. Who is this guy? He is even able to defeat the original demon fusion. Meanwhile, in the battle of the Demon King and Bon, both of them seemed to be very similar. But as the battle progressed, the Demon King began to be bent due to Meliodas from the inside of his body continuing to fight against his father. Father, I'm not going to allow you to take control of my body, much less do harm to my own body. Damn it. How are you able to keep opposing? I've been able to recover the Ten Commandments. On the one hand, in the Celestial Kingdom, the supreme deity of that world was observing everything that happened. That warrior possesses an incredible power, with which he's able to wipe out all those damn demons. My lady, but won't that warrior be a problem for us in the same way? <laughs> of course not. Since the warrior is only pure muscle, we're capable of reasoning to win on the battlefield. Returning to the battlefield, Bon was able to corner the Demon King, so much that he was able to lose mobility for about a minute. Enough time to perform a combined attack between Meliodas and Bon, that powerful attack was able to almost pulverize even the body of Meliodas. The Demon King was able to expel all the Ten Commandments, which had fallen near Master Kusak. Zeldris Sama has to be the next Demon King. I won't let the bastards of Meliodas become the new king. Zeldris, despite being very badly injured, for his battle against Escanor, he would try to stop him, since now he understood that the Demon King was only looking for a container. But it was too late, since at that moment, the Ten Commandments joined Zeldris, which at the moment was able to end the lives of Kusak and Chandler. His body turned out to be much more compatible with me, since even I have the full control, but it's not time to face these damn ones. The Demon King, with a great shadow technique, was able to disappear from the place, leaving no trace, so that the battle would be over, but the most powerful opponent was still loose in the kingdom. Meanwhile, in the dimension of Goku, the Z-Warriors tried to use any method to bring back Son Goku, but it was impossible for them since even Shenlong was not able to fulfill such a wish. Beerus, we have no choice. We have to inform the great Xenosama and Daishenkin-sama as they're the only ones with the necessary power to achieve it. That's right, Beerusama, we'll have to go to the High Priest. Both deities quickly left the Kingdom of the All, which would be received by the High Priest upon arrival. Deities of Universe 7, it's a surprise that you were around. Tell me, what has happened? Father, how long without seeing you? We have a bad one about Son Goku. What's happened to Son Goku? He's Xenosama's best friend, nothing bad should happen to him as even the integrity of the Twelve Universes may be in danger. We know, Father. For that very reason, we've come to inform you of this unfortunate event. Daishaken, while listening to everything Wiss would tell him, was a little surprised because the power to be able to open different holes to different dimensions must have been incredible. That's a big problem. Of course, there is a solution, but it's a very complicated one, since there are millions of dimensions. I understand, Father. We have only come to inform you of this event. I appreciate the information, Wiss. Now you can retire. In a few moments, I'll be around Universe 7 to solve what's happened. Indeed, he would quickly leave, while the High Priest was thinking how to find Goku, since it was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Almost impossible. I have to use the blood of his children to be able to form a path, to which Son Goku has been sent, since the blood is impossible for it to fail. Returning to the tavern, Goku was very thoughtful due to the power that the Demon King had achieved. But at the moment, Meliodas was able to wake up, being the same as always, so he would thank each of his present. Thanks to everyone, and especially to you, Goku, who are able to stop me. <laughs> Don't worry, but when all this is over, I want to have a combat with that new state you possess. <laughs> of course, Goku. It's a promise, but we have to expel my father from my brother Zeldris' body. Everyone was talking very relaxed while Ban and Escanor were fighting against the Demon King. Damn! 
The power of that fucker is even greater than when he was a captain of Meliodas' body. Now that you won't be able to do anything, I plan to end their life one by one. For that reason, I was able to seal the tavern that everyone else is in. So, for that reason, none of our colleagues will have come with us. Damn it. This bastard's gonna kill us. I will not allow you to end the lives of the innocent people. Right now, I will grant you the wish that you meet the one. Escanor's power would begin to rise to impressive levels. So much so that even the heat that was expelled by Escanor's body even forced Bond to move away, or he'd be completely charred. Escanor, stop! Don't do something crazy! Your body's not able to withstand all that power. You'll die! Dying for my companions is not a bad death, as I will not let this bastard hurt anyone else. Escanor had reached the most powerful state with which both began with a great battle, which seemed very evenly matched. However, Escanor's entire body was suffering consequences of using the power beyond his limits, so in each exchange of blows, large amounts of blood came out of his entire body. Body resists a little more. Sun strike! An incredible blow was heading towards the Demon King, who with great difficulty was able to stop it, but the blow would begin to drag him all over the battlefield. Demon Sword Summoning! A dark colored sword would appear, being able to destroy the scanner technique with a simple pressure as it was a weapon of the highest quality. Returned to the tavern, King would go out to observe the panorama of everything that had happened, being amazed to realize how a great barrier of energy was covering the whole boar hat. Captain Ban and Escanor are in danger! Everyone else would leave the tavern noticing the great barrier, Goku upset, would charge an incredible power in his fist, being able to completely destroy it. The instant the barrier was destroyed, it could be perceived how the power of Escanor overflowed. I don't care what I do, but this time, I'll finish with him. I won't let anyone else get hurt! Goku would use teleportation quickly, with which he would reach the battlefield, realizing how Escanor was about to sacrifice himself for the entire team of the Eight Deadly Sins. Goku, please protect Ban. There's nothing I can do to stop this power anymore, and I'd rather have the feat of taking the Demon King with me. Escanor, stop! Without listening to Goku's words, he was able to create a powerful attack, which was the size of the sun, as well as the heat that radiated from it that even Goku would form a barrier not to be affected. Escanor, you're the proudest person I've ever met. I think you compare yourself to Vegeta, since he sacrificed for all of us at the same time. Escanor's body received all the consequences of having used the power beyond its limits, so at the moment of finishing the attack, he'd begin to fade into nothingness, while Goku was very sad but with a big scream was able to access Super Saiyan Blue, making everything around him shudder, because he was able to perceive the essence of the Demon King, which had hardly been left alive, but in front of it, Goku with a powerful blow was able to destroy his entire chest, so a lot of blood could be observed falling to the soil. I swear I'll annihilate you. No matter what happens, I'll send you to the other world. Goku, without any mercy, would begin to torture the Demon King, and with a strong kick, he'd been able to separate the head from his body. Goku would throw a great power towards the body of the Demon King, so while he was disintegrating, he tried to escape from the body of Zeldris. It's now I will stop my father from escaping again. Meliodas would accede to the status of Demon King, with which he was able to destroy each of the commandments, simply leaving Zeldris' body in terrible condition. Damn it, I haven't been able to protect Escanor. I'm not a good companion. Goku, you've done everything you could. You don't have to worry. I know that Escanor is in a better place. But from the whole place, a large portal could be observed. That's right, Daishake was able to connect to other dimensions, managing to find Goku having raised all his power. Mr. Goku, how long has it been since I saw you? I'm glad to know that you're in perfect condition. It's ready to return? Daishake and Sama, so long, of course I'm ready, but before that, can I ask you a favor? Of course, Goku, tell me. You can retrieve a being from this world. His name's Escanor. He died to save all of us. It's okay, Mr. Goku, don't worry. Merlin would be surprised to realize how the being in front of them was even able to revive the dead. Daishenken was able to make Escanor appear in front of everyone, so he would approach Goku. I have fulfilled your request, Mr. Goku. It's time to leave this dimension. It was a pleasure to fight by your side, but if you need my help, press this button and I'll be right there, no matter where I am. I appreciate your help, Goku. I hope someday to be able to know the world you come from. 
Goku and Daishenken would enter the portal, appearing in the Kingdom of the All. Thank you very much, Daishenken, for bringing me back. Now I'll be able to return to my friends. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Goku. You're the greatest Xenosama's best friend. Goku would leave for his planet with teleportation, while in the world of the Seven Deadly Sins, Goku would be remembered as the legend that ended the Holy War. Vegeta's transformation in Super Saiyan Blue Evolved caused a dramatic change in the intensity of the battle. His bright blue aura flashed with overwhelming energy as he charged towards the shadowy creature and Broly, who was still under his influence. It's time to put an end to this. Broly, I'll fight to free you from this darkness. The shadow creature, sensing the threat posed by Super Saiyan Blue, adopted a defensive stance. On the other hand, Broly, his eyes still darkened, prepared to face Vegeta. Vegeta unleashed a flurry of quick and precise attacks, combining punches and kicks with astonishing speed. Each move was charged with the strength of the new form, and the shadow creature was forced to retreat in the face of Vegeta's fury. Broly, regain control! I'll not allow this darkness to consume you! Broly, under the influence of the Dark Possession, responded with impressive stamina. His attacks were brutal and uncontrolled, but Vegeta moved with a dexterity that defied expectations. I need to find an opening in this possession. In an act of bravery, Vegeta launched himself directly towards Broly. Their fists collided forcefully, and Vegeta, using all his skill, made precise strikes that temporarily weakened the Dark Influence. Broly, fight this! You're stronger than this darkness! The shadowy creature, seeing Vegeta's resistance, increased his energy and fused even more with Broly. Now the Dark Influence was more entrenched than ever, and Broly unleashed an explosion of wild power. You can't stop me, Saiyan Prince! Vegeta, not backing down, continued to engage Broly. The battle reached new heights as both warriors unleashed the most powerful attacks. Vegeta launched a Big Bang attack while Broly responded with a gigantic charge of dark energy. The collision of energies generated a huge explosion that blanketed the area. After the dust settled, Vegeta lay on the ground clearly exhausted but not giving up. I can't lose. My determination is stronger than your darkness. The battle between Vegeta and Broly, who was possessed by the shadow creature, reached a critical point. The overflowing energy of the confrontation was spreading across the battlefield, distorting the air and creating palpable tension. At that crucial moment, Goku found himself regaining consciousness, stood up, and immediately went to Saiyan's prince's side. Vegeta, let's go! Let's give it all we've got! Goku's transformation into Super Saiyan Phase 2 and joined the fray. The shadow creature, seeing the arrival of another Saiyan warrior, prepared to face the new threat. Kakra, you're just in time. This thing has gotten stronger with Broly. We'll face it together! Broly, we won't let this darkness control you! The three Saiyans stood in formation, ready to deal with the shadow creature fused with Broly. The intensity of the conflict increased even more with flashes of energy and clashes of fists echoing throughout the battlefield. Come on, Kakarot, let's attack in unison and free Broly! I got it, Vegeta! Together, we'll free him! The Saiyans coordinated their attacks, launching a combined blast towards the shadow creature. Despite their efforts, Broly's dark possession was still resisting fueled by the brute strength of the legendary Saiyan. Broly, under the influence of the shadow creature, unleashed an uncontrolled fury. His attacks were unpredictable and devastating, putting the Saiyans on the defensive. Goku, Vegeta, and the shadow creature continued to exchange energy blasts and powerful blows. Vegeta, we must break that possession. We can't let Broly fall into darkness. Roger that, Kakarot. Let's keep attacking together. Amidst the chaos of the battlefield, the fiery aura of the Saiyans lit up the sky, a visual manifestation of their mammoth power. Goku and Vegeta, feeling the weight of the battle, decided to take it a step further. They joined their energies in a symphony of power, a final bid to tear apart the shadows enveloping the evil presence. The shadow creature on the brink of the abyss responded with desperation. It raised its own power and the darkness churned with intensity as it struggled to resist the combined onslaught of the Saiyans. The clash of energies created a cataclysm of flashes and booms, shaking the battlefield to its core. At that critical moment, the energy explosion was unleashed with dazzling magnificence. The earth shook and the shockwave swept across the landscape, leaving behind a trail of destruction. 
Goku, Vegeta, and Broly, enveloped in the blanket of the explosion, were momentarily eclipsed by the blinding light and dancing shadow. When the shimmering luminosity faded, the Saiyans found themselves faced with a new scenario. On the ground lay Broly, his figure shrouded in a residual haze of the contest. The dark aura that had consumed him had finally dissipated. Stillness reigned on the battlefield. As the warriors approached with worried looks, the formidable warrior who now resisted, his power darkened, finally silenced. We did it, Vegeta. Broly's free. Yes, but this shadow creature's still a problem. We can't let our guard down. Vegeta nodded grimly as they watched Broly, who lay on the ground, slowly recovering from the intense battle. However, at that moment of apparent calm, the shadow creature, cunning and unnoticed, had left Broly's possession to seek a new host. The dark entity swiftly swept into the shadows, unnoticed by the Saiyans, who still assessing their companion's condition. Silently, the shadow creature crept towards Gohan, who had been watching the battle from a distance. Gohan, oblivious to the threat looming over him, felt a shiver run down his spine, just as the shadow creature enveloped him with its dark presence. A momentary flash of its eyes indicated that something was terribly wrong. At that instant, Gohan, with a sudden alteration in his expression, went on guard without warning. His gaze, now posed by the shadow creature, glowed with a malevolence that contrasted with his gentle nature. Goku, noticing this unintention, turned towards Gohan, but before he could react, Gohan, under the influence of the shadow creature, moved with supernatural speed. The confrontation with Broly had left the Saiyans exhausted, and the shadow creature, seizing the opportunity, vanished into the darkness along with Gohan. Vegeta, realizing the situation, gritted his teeth in fury. The threat persisted, and now Gohan, a valuable ally, was in the hands of the shadows. Goku and Vegeta, despite their exhaustion, prepared for a new confrontation, aware that the battle had not yet come to an end. The tension in the air was palpable, as Goku and Vegeta, still worried about Broly, with determination, turned towards the place where the Dark Entity had vanished. Damn it, where'd that thing go? I don't know, Vegeta, but we must find it before it hurts Gohan! The two Saiyans, quick as the wind, rushed towards where Gohan had been standing, their senses alert. The shadow creature, now inside Gohan, emerged from the shadows with a sinister laugh. Ha 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 ha! Looks like they're not as cunning as they thought. Now I have a new toy for my plans. Get out of Gohan, you damn creature! I'll not allow you to possess my son! Ha! You think you could stop me? My power possesses even more of your combined forces! Do not underestimate the Saiyans. We have overcome greater challenges than you. Leave Gohan and face your fate, creature. You'll not be victorious. The shadow creature, now in control of Gohan, smiled malevolently before responding. We'll see how long you can resist. Gohan is now an instrument of my will. The shadow creature possessing Gohan unleashed a burst of dark energy that distorted the surrounding space. Goku and Vegeta suddenly found themselves during a chaotic confrontation, with Gohan now transformed into an instrument of the malevolent entity. The waves of energy radiating from Gohan's possessed figure created an ominous aura that filled the battlefield to find the Saiyan's endurance and determination. The Saiyans, in their Super Saiyan Blue form, prepared for the impending clash. The shadow creature using Gohan's body moved with supernatural agility, dodging the Saiyan's first attacks with grace and malice. Gohan, his eyes now filled with darkness, lunged at Goku with astonishing speed. Goku blocked Gohan's first few blows with difficulty, feeling the enhanced strength and speed of his new controlled son. The fight was intense, each move charged with power and ferocity. Meanwhile, Vegeta positioned himself strategically, assessing the situation looking for an opening to attack. The shadow creature, through Gohan, unleashed a flurry of attack, which devastating blows that kept Goku on the defensive. However, Goku's ability to adapt quickly to the battle allowed him to counter the attacks and counterattack with his own overwhelming power. Vegeta, sensing an opportunity, lunged at the shadow creature from an unexpected angle. However, the dark entity had sharp reflexes and deflected Vegeta's attack with ease, throwing Gohan against Goku as a distraction. The shadow creature's strategy paid off, as it took advantage of the distraction to hit Vegeta with a beam of dark energy. Vegeta, although he resisted the impact, was momentarily weakened. The entity, now with a malevolent smile, turned to him. Damn it! This is an overshadow creature. 
Goku reacting quickly, stepped between the shadow creature and Vegeta. Vegeta, hold on! We can't let this thing divide us! The shadow creature, enjoying the chaos at its zone, released a dark aura that enveloped both Saiyans. The dark energy sought to confuse and weaken their senses, however the Saiyans instinctive connection to Ki enabled them to resist the dark influence. The battle raged in a frenzy of clashing colors and energies. Gohan, controlled by the shadow creature, moved with a mixture of speed and agility that defied the laws of physics. Goku and Vegeta, each focusing on their own battlefront, were trying to coordinate their attacks to free Gohan from the dark possession. Gohan, fight this darkness! You're stronger than this! Gohan, though showing flashes of resistance, was caught in an internal struggle between his will and the shadow creature's control. The battle grew more challenging. With each passing second, the shadow creature reveled in its ability to manipulate and corrupt one of Earth's mightiest warriors. Vegeta, recovering from the earlier onslaught, threw himself back into the fray. The shadow creature however anticipated his attack and gracefully dodged Vegeta's attempts to strike it. The dark entity counterattacked with a series of precise blows that forced Vegeta to retreat. You damn shadow, don't underestimate the prince of the Saiyans. Goku, seeing his partner's difficulty, raised his power to the maximum. Dazzling energy emanated from his Super Saiyan Blue form as he prepared for a concentrated attack. The shadow creature, noticing the glowing threat, diverted its attention to Goku. Vegeta, keep up the pressure! I'm gonna concentrate my energy to free Gohan! Vegeta nodded and increased his offensive, distracting the shadow creature as Goku concentrated his power. The fight reached a new level of intensity, with each move echoing across the vast battlefield. The energy collided, creating shockwaves that distorted reality itself. Goku, eyes glowing with determination, unleashed his most powerful attack, a sphere of glowing blue energy formed in his outstretched hands. Charged with the combined strength of the Saiyans, the spear grew in size and the power as Goku had held it in place. It's time to free Gohan! The shadow creature, realizing the threat, moved quickly to stop Goku's attack. Vegeta, taking advantage of the distraction, lunged with renewed fury, looking for an opening to attack. The battle reached its climax when Goku released the energy sphere, ascending it directly towards the shadow creature. The energy sphere burst into a dazzling flash, illuminating the battlefield with intense light. Shockwaves swept through the darkness as Goku's purifying energy sought to free Gohan from the shadow creature's possession. However, as the light faded and the earth stopped shaking, the shadow creature emerged seemingly unharmed. The dark entity, now irritated, turned to the Saiyans with a twisted laugh. Is that all you can do? My power is unbreakable! Goku and Vegeta, despite their exhaustion, prepared for the next assault. The battle, far from ending, dragged on into confrontation of epic proportions. Darkness and light collided in an endless clash, with the will of the Saiyans resisting against the entity that threatened to plunge them into the shadows. The dark creature, after resisting Goku's powerful attack, showed a malicious smile. A dark glow enveloped Gohan, and his body began to tremble with intensity. A guttural scream echoed through the air as the dark entity forced a unique transformation on the Saiyan warrior. Gohan, under the shadow creature's influence, contorted and his body was enveloped in a dark, feral energy. The earth trembled with the intensity of the transformation, and Gohan's figure began to change. Defined musculature, red eyes, a wild gaze, long gray hair, and emerging in the new form, Gohan Dark Beast. Vegeta and Goku, shocked by the unexpected evolution, instinctively recoiled from the overwhelming presence of Dark Gohan Beast. The shadow creature had accomplished what it could not do with Broly, unleash a unique and uncontrolled transformation on Gohan. Dark Beast Gohan, now freed from any hint of rationality, roared skyward emitting an overwhelming energy that shook the battlefield. His eyes glowed with an animalistic intensity, and his posture indicated that human control was suppressed. This can't be happening. What did that thing do? The shadow creature managed to unlock something inside Gohan. This won't be easy. The shadow creature, pleased with the success of its manipulation, watched the scene with satisfaction. Now! Witness my true power, the same Beast Warrior. How do you plan to stop him? Dark Beast Gohan let out a deafening roar and lunged towards Vegeta with impressive speed. 
Dark Beast Gohan's attacks were ferociously savage, his brute strength and speed surpassing even Broly's most rampaging transformation. Vegeta, using his speed and agility, dodged Dark Beast Gohan's first attacks. However, the Saiyan Beast Warrior's ferocity was unpredictable, and Vegeta was forced to deploy all his skill to stay out of range of the devastating attacks. Goku, assessing the situation, transformed into Super Saiyan Blue and rushed to Vegeta's aid. The two Saiyans fought in tactical coordination, looking to open an opportunity to counter Gohan's savage new form. The battle became a whirlwind of energy, with explosions and crashes echoing across the battlefield. The shadow creature in the shadows continued to manipulate and fuel Dark Beast Gohan's fury. The Saiyan strategy was becoming more and more challenging as Dark Beast Gohan seemed to be one step ahead, anticipating their moves. Damn it! Gohan Beast is too unpredictable! We must find a way to free Gohan from this transformation! We can't let the shadow control his true power! As the Saiyans faced Gohan Beast's fury, the shadow creature watched from the shadows and joined the chaos he had unleashed. The situation was becoming more critical with each passing moment, and the Saiyans endured, and the Saiyans endurance was being tested in the face of Beast Gohan's uncontrollable fury. The battle raged on in a titanic struggle between light and darkness, with the hope of freeing Gohan from the influence of the shadow creature hanging in delicate balance. The Saiyans, determined to overcome this challenge, faced an enemy that had managed to unleash an even greater internal threat than before. While the intense battle raged on on the battlefield, Piccolo, the Namekian sage, was immersed in his mental training somewhere secluded. His concentration was so deep that he could feel an abrupt shift in key, a disturbance that reverberated through space and time. A shiver ran down his back, indicating the gravity of the situation. Something's not right. The Namekian instantly stood up, his cloak billowing as he focused on the direction of the glowing chaos. The power he felt was not just brute force, it was an amalgamam of dark energies that seemed to defy the very essence of reality. Wasting no time, Piccolo prepared to approach the side of the conflict. Back on the battlefield, Goku and Vegeta fought valiantly against Dark Beast Gohan, who moved with uncontrollable ferocity under the influence of the shadow creature. The dark entity sensing Piccolo's rival smirked. Looks like we have a new guest. This just gets more interesting. Goku and Vegeta focused on Gohan Beast, noticing Piccolo's presence as he appeared on the battlefield with a serenity that contrasted with the surrounding chaos. What happened here? What have you done with Gohan? That shadow thing possessed Gohan and transformed it into a wild beast. We can't free Gohan this way! The shadow creature manipulates his power in unimaginable ways! Dark Beast Gohan, noticing Piccolo's arrival, turned to him with wild eyes. The shadow creature, enjoying the chaos, prepared for the next act of this heartbreaking play. Welcome, Piccolo. You're just in time to witness the inevitable downfall of these Saiyans. Don't underestimate the Saiyans or my determination. I'm here to free Gohan. The Namekian embraced himself for the confrontation, deploying his key with an intensity that made it clear he would not be a mere spectator in this battle. Dark Beast Gohan, fueled by the shadowy influence, roared and lunged towards Piccolo with a speed that defied all logic. The battle became even more chaotic with Piccolo's entrance. His movements were precise and calculated, contrasting with the wild ferocity of Dark Beast Gohan. Goku and Vegeta, aware of Piccolo's strategic skill, adjusted their approach to coordinate their attacks with the Namekian. Meanwhile, the shadow creature watched the battle with a Machiavellian smile. Join the confrontation between the forces of light and shadow. The dark entity was determined to prove that its influence was insurmountable. The fight unfolded in a whirlwind of colliding energies, with Piccolo demonstrating his tactical and strategic prowess. Dark Beast Gohan, however, remained a formidable challenge, his erratic movements and uncontrolled strength testing the tenacity of the warriors on the battlefield. Goku, Vegeta, we need to plan to break the connection between Gohan and that shadow creature. You're right, Piccolo. We need to attack from different fronts and destabilize that connection. I'll take care of keeping Beast Gohan busy. Kakarot, you use the connection you have with your son to try to isolate the shadow creature. Goku and Vegeta, coordinating their efforts with Piccolo's strategic expertise, win on the assault. Piccolo used his wisdom to be able to devise a way to, to get Dark Beast Gohan out of said possession, while Vegeta unleashed his fury with calculated attacks to keep the beast at bay. As the battle continued, the shadow creature began to feel the pressure of the combined strategy of the Saiyans and Piccolo. The connection between Gohan and the Dark Entity was under threat, 
and the shadow creature, despite its confidence, was beginning to show signs of concern. The battle was far from over, but the warrior's resilience was growing stronger in the face of the adversity that loomed over them. As Piccolo continued his mental struggle to free Gohan from the shadow creature's possession, his Namekian senses sharpened. Keen perception led him to identify a small shadow leech clinging to Dark Beast Gohan's lower neck, a detail that had not been evident in Broly's previous possession due to his long hair covering that region. That's it, the key in this little shadow leech on his neck. We must eliminate it to free Gohan. Piccolo's revelation attracted the attention of Vegeta and Goku on the physical battlefield. Vegeta, upon hearing this, turned his gaze to the back of Gohan Beast's dark neck and noticed the presence of the Shadow Leech. A Shadow Leech? That explains why we couldn't free Broly this way. How do we eliminate it without harming Gohan? As Piccolo struggled to maintain his mental connection, he analyzed this situation and came up with a strategy. If we attack the Shadow Leech directly, we might harm Gohan in the process. We need a precise way to eliminate it without endangering his life. So what's the plan, Piccolo? Goku, you've mastered Ultra Instinct, but you can only maintain it for a few seconds. We need to take advantage of those brief moments to distract Dark Beast Gohan and allow you to get close enough to destroy the Shadow Leech. Understood, Piccolo. I'll do my best. But how do we make sure Beast Gohan doesn't attack while Kakarot's approaching? That's the tricky part. We need to keep Gohan busy and distracted. Vegeta, your attacks must be precise and constant, keeping his attention on you. I will, but Kakarai, don't make me regret this. The battle resumed with renowned intensity. Vegeta went on the offensive, attacking Gohan Dark Beast with a series of swift and powerful blows. Gohan responded with ferocity, but Vegeta maintained agile, dodging his attacks while keeping the Savage Saiyan Warrior's attention. At that moment, Goku concentrated, channeling Ultra Instinct. An aura of flickering energy surrounded him as he activated the powerful transformation. The speed increased exponentially, allowing him to easily dodge Dark Beast Gohan's attacks. Now, Goku, now's your chance. Goku, in his Ultra Instinct state, moved with superhuman speed towards Gohan's rear. The shadow creature, still focused on the fierce confrontation with Vegeta, did not notice Goku's approach. This is my chance to end this! With pinpoint accuracy, Goku reached out his hand and touched the small shadow leech on Gohan's neck. The leech, upon being touched by the Ultra Instinct energy, began to fade, emitting a dark screech before dissolving completely. Dark Beast Gohan, losing connection with the shadow leech, shook violently, as if releasing himself from a trance. Vegeta, noticing the change, cautiously stepped back as Goku returned to his normal state. What happened? Kakarot seems to have found a way to free you from that thing. It was risky, but it worked. Well done, Goku. But don't let your guard down. This shadow creature might have more tricks up its sleeve. The immediate threat had been neutralized. The shadow creature, watching from the shadows, moving away unnoticed by the Saiyan warriors, was not about to give up. So the shadow creature set out to return to its master. After the terrifying moment that the Z warriors had experienced, Goku and Vegeta realized that Beerus and Whis were not on Earth. They had disappeared just moments before the shadow creatures appeared on Earth. This is because Daishenken discovered that Xenosama had been killed by his father and immediately summoned all the angels and gods of destruction. In the majestic realm of all, Daishenken, the high priest, summoned all the angels and gods of destruction of the existing universes. The atmosphere in the hall was unusually tense, and concern was reflected in the faces of those present. Daishenken, with his usual calmness, prepared to share the disturbing truth he had discovered. Angels and gods of destruction, the time has come to face a powerful truth. Xenosama, our beloved king of all, has been slain. Silence fell over the hall. The angels and the gods of destruction exchanged looks of disbelief and dismay. No one expected that such a tragedy could occur, especially at the hands of someone so powerful. My investigation revealed that the one responsible for this abominable act was Xenosama's own father. The news resounded like a somber echo in the room. Everyone present processed the shocking revelation. The omnipresent figure of Xenosama, the supreme deity had been shattered by his own protagonist. Mojito, Sidra's angel, spoke in a worried voice. How is it possible that a being as powerful as Xenosama's father could have committed such an act? 
That is a question for which I still have no answers. But now we must face the consequences of this event. The stability of the multiverse is in danger. Erak, the god of destruction of Quitella, asked, And what measures will we take in the face of this threat? What will happen to the throne of Xenosama? That is a question we must discuss and resolve. For now, the throne remains empty, and our duty is to maintain peace and balance. But before we make hasty decisions, we need to fully understand the magnitude of this situation. Beerus and Wisp prepared to inform the gods of destruction and angels of all universes about what they had witnessed while on planet Earth with Goku and Vegeta. The Hall of the Realm of Everything was filled with celestial beings, each one expectant and worried about the news they were about to receive. Attention everyone! We have crucial information to share about the events that have been unfolded. Before we are summoned here, the Father of Xenosama appeared on all the planets of the multiverse. Surprised was reflected on the faces of those present. Murmurs and whispers filled the room, as the gods of destruction and angels exchanged looks of disbelief. His visit was not simply to report the death of Xenosama. He announced the holding of the tournament that would determine the survival of the planets in each universe. Additional rumors filled the room, creating a constant buzz of concern. The gods of destruction and angels wanted to understand the implications of such an announcement. He informed the rules of the tournament and the intentions behind such a competition, but it's necessary that we all work together to get answers and face this threat. It is time to join forces and overcome this crisis. The fate of our universes is at stake. As the gods and angels absorbed the gravity of the situation, in every corner of the Hall of the Realm of Everything, conversations and plans were brewing to confront the mysterious tournament that threatened to upset the balance of the multiverse. Uncertainty hung in the air, but the determination of the divine beings was determined to face the unknown that lay ahead. In the Hall of Everything, Daishaken, the High Priest, sensed the imminent arrival of extremely powerful entities heading for the different planets of the multiverse. His face reflected seriousness, as he prepared to inform all the angels and gods of destruction present of the coming threat. Gods and angels of destruction, the time has come to face a new and challenging threat. Entities of great power are headed towards the planets of our universes and their goal seems to be a direct confrontation with the strongest warriors of each world. The expressions of those present became serious. Aware of the gravity of the situation, Daishenkin continued with determination. It's crucial that we move quickly to protect the strongest warriors of each planet, regardless of which universe they belong to. The threat we face does not respect universal boundaries, and we must act with unity to preserve the balance. Vados, the Angel of Champa, raised his hand. How do you plan for us to move, Daishenkin? We each have responsibilities in our universes. I understand the complexity of this situation, but the magnitude of this threat requires immediate action. I suggest that every Angel and God of Destruction move to the planet threatened by this unknown force. We must prevent the strongest warriors from being defeated before we can fully understand our enemies. Sounds like a sensible plan, Daishenkin. If we all work together, we can protect our warriors and gain more information about these powerful entities. Each angel and god of destruction nodded in agreement, accepting the need to act immediately. They moved quickly to the various planets, casting aside universal barriers in a joint effort to safeguard the multiverse. May the wisdom and power of each of you guide this effort. Let us not underestimate this new threat. Our duty is to protect the existence of our universes. With those words, the angels and gods of destruction dispersed, leaving the Hall of All in preparation to face a challenge that transcended universal boundaries and demanded the collaboration of all divine beings. Uncertainty hung in the air, but determination to preserve the balance of the multiverse guided the powerful beings in their joint mission. The angels and gods of destruction quickly teleported to the threatened planets, each determined to protect the strongest warriors on the various planets. In the blink of an eye, the skies lit up with flashes of divine energy as Awamo and Ewin, Cognac and Quintella, Matanu and Gein, Wiss and Beerus, and the other angels and gods of destruction headed toward their assigned destinations. The planet Thraxis Nocturne lay peaceful in the corner of the cosmos, its nocturnal luminosity radiating a tranquility 
I was about to be disturbed. In the vast space, Awamo the Angel, with his small book in hand, and his god of destruction, Ewin, an imposing figure with a stern gaze, detected the arrival of a shadow creature, a minion of Xenosama's father. The creature, shrouded in malevolent darkness, descended with malevolent determination towards Thraxis Nocturne. Ewin, without hesitation, deployed his energy of destruction while Iwano stood by, hoping to resolve the conflict without a bath of chaos. Creature, your darkness will not be tolerated in this realm. Stop your destructive plans. The shadow creature emanated a guttural growl, its presence emanating an unnatural energy that distorted the space around it. The space battle began with an explosion of opposing forces. Ewan launched destructive beams, while Luamo used his speed to dodge the attacks and assess the situation. Ewan, this creature's stronger than we imagined. We must be cautious. I know, Awamo, but we can't let him destroy Thraxis Nocturne. We must give our best. The shadow creature, agile and evasive, responded to the attacks with dark energy waves that distorted space. The battle spread across the firmament, leaving traces of destructive energy in its wake. Ewen tried to anticipate the creature's movements. However, the shadow creature proved to be agile and adaptive, countering every strategy with an unmatched dark force. Our conventional methods don't work. Ewen, we need to combine our forces. I agree, Awamo. It's time to show them the true power of destruction. Awamo and Ewen merged their energies, creating a flash of light that defied the surrounding darkness. The shadow creature, perceiving the threat, intensified its own energy, generating a collision of cosmic forces that shook space itself. The battle reached a fever pitch, with cosmic explosions lighting up the scene as Awamo and Ewen struggled to contain the darkness. The struggle took place not only on the physical plane, but also on the spiritual one, where the will to protect Thraxis Nocturne was pitted against the ruthless ambition of the shadow creature. The fusion of Awamo and Ewen unleashed a dazzling energy that eclipsed even the nocturnal luminosity of Thraxis Nocturne. The gold and violet glow enveloped the divine couple as they prepared to face the dark threat looming over the peaceful planet. It's time to show the true extent of our power, Awamo! The shadow creature, aware of the growing threat, rushed towards them with supernatural speed. Awamo, with his keen perception, anticipated every movement of the creature, allowing the couple to dodge its onslaughts with heavenly elegance. Keep calm, Ewan. We must synchronize our movements to counteract their darkness. Ewan nodded and unleashed a series of destructive energy blasts that lit up the space around him. However, the shadow creature responded with amazing agility, dodging every attack with meandering movements. The battle became a cosmic game of strategy and speed. The angel Awamo and the god of destruction Ewan soon realized that in order to defeat this entity, they would need a coordinated attack that transcended the limits of their individual abilities. In a moment of perfect timing, they unleashed a gale of combined energy. Awamo channeled the energy of destruction while Ewen released violet flashes of destruction. Focus your energy, Awamo. Let's get rid of this darkness once and for all. Awamo nodded and joined the attack with determination. The fused energy of both angel and god turned into a spear of golden and violet light that pierced through space with an impressive speed. The shadow creature, caught in the torrent of power, let out a heart-rendering howl as it was enveloped by the luminosity. The impact was abysmal, generating an expansive wave that shook the cosmos. The darkness that enveloped the creature began to dissipate, revealing its twisted and weakened form. Awamo and Ewen, exhausted but triumphant, stood on guard ready for any eventuality. We have managed to contain their darkness, but we can't let our guard down. The shadow creature, now visibly weakened, recoiled before the imposing presence of Awamo and Ewen. The light had prevailed over the darkness in the cosmic corner of Thraxis Nocturne. The divine couple remained firm in their duty to protect the planet that this creature wanted to destroy. However, the battle was not yet over, and the fates of the planets remained uncertain in the vastness of space. After the shocked combined attack of Awamo and Ewan, the space around Thraxis Nocturne was vibrating with the residual energy of the cosmic battle. The shadow creature, apparently weakened, remained suspended in the cosmic void, 
enveloped in a dark glow that seemed to absorb the surrounding light. The divine couple watched cautiously, aware that the fate of Thraxus Nocturne was still hung in the cosmic balance. Ewen, something's not right. The darkness of that creature seems to be getting stronger instead of weaker. It seems that our attack has absorbed Byer, but it shouldn't be possible. How can he transform our energy of destruction to his own power? The shadow creature, now surrounded by more intense aura, began to change its shape. Its twisted figure became more defined. His eyes shone with a malevolent lucidity. The darkness emanating from her was becoming denser, distorting the space around her. You have underestimated my true potential, angel and god of destruction. Your energy has strengthened me beyond your comprehension. The divine couple prepared for what was to come next, aware that the threat they faced had evolved. The shadow creature, now empowered by the absorbed energy, charged towards them with renewed speed and ferocity. We need to be more cautious, Ewan. It seems that every blow we inflict makes her stronger. Understood, Owamo, but we can't allow this darkness to devour Thraxus Nocturne. The battle resumed with increased intensity. The shadow creature attacked with bursts of dark energy that cut through space, while Owamo and Ewan responded with flashes of golden and violet light. The cosmic dance of lights and shadows painted an epic picture in the vastness of the universe. Each blow and backlash echoed like thunder in space, distorting reality itself. Awamo, with his keen perception, tried to anticipate the movements of the dark creature, but the dark entity proved to be unpredictable. Ewen, with his energy of destruction, sought to weaken the creature, but his attacks seemed to be absorbed and turned into an additional source of power. Every time we hit her, her power increases. We can't go on like this. We must find a way to counteract his ability, to absorb our energy. Do you have any ideas, Awamo? Awamo pondered for a moment, his angelic mind working in search of a solution. Meanwhile, the shadow creature, aware of its opponent's confusion, took the opportunity to launch a surprise attack. A wave of dark energy enveloped Awamo and Ewan, distorting their perception and weakening their defenses. Ha 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 ha! Your resistance is useless. I am the embodiment of darkness. His light cannot prevail before me. The situation was becoming more and more desperate for the divine couple as they struggled to resist the shadow creature's attacks. Awamo turned his attention to the small book he always carried with him. An idea began to form in his mind. Ewen, I think I have an idea, but we need to synchronize our attacks in a different way. Explain yourself, Awamo. Awamo explained his plan to Ewen, who nodded in understanding. Both God and Angel prepared to put their strategy into practice. The shadow creature, confident in its superiority, launched into the attack again, but this time Awamo and Ewen were ready to respond differently. Now Ewen, combine your energy of destruction with mine in a more controlled way. Ewen nodded and channeled his energy to Awamo, who in turn merged it with his. Instead of launching a direct attack, they created a sphere of combined light and energy that floated between them. Do you think this tactic will change the outcome? We'll see. The energy sphere began to slowly expand, emanating a glowing light that contrasted the surrounding darkness. The shadow creature, curious but confident, watched the development with disdain. The fused power is not only destructive, but it also has properties that counteract its absorption capacity. The combined energy sphere, now reaching its maximum expansion, released a wave of light and energy that enveloped the shadow creature. This time, instead of absorbing the power, the darkness that characterized her began to dissipate. What is this? My power should not be weakened! We create an energy that goes beyond destruction and creation, one that neutralizes the darkness that you're trying to absorb. The shadow creature, weakened by Awamo and Ewen's strategic counterattack, retreated as the combined energy sphere continued to exert its effect. The light emanating from the sphere began to purify the darkness surrounding the entity, revealing its original form before corruption. It seems our tactic's working, but we must make sure we contain it completely. We can't let our guard down. Let's continue with the strategy until the creature's completely neutralized. The space battle continued, but this time Awamo and Ewen had the upper hand. 
His sphere of combined energy continued to exert its purifying effect, dispelling the darkness that threatened Thraxus Nocturne. With each passing moment, the shadow creature grew weaker. The light of hope began to shine in the corner of the cosmos that was once on the verge of destruction. The shadow creature, weakened by Awamo and Ewan's strategy, retreated into space. Its distorted form twisting as the combined energy sphere continued to purify the darkness that enveloped it. In a desperate attempt to regain its strength, the shadow creature began to explore its surroundings, looking for an opportunity to turn the situation in his favor. My power is weakened here. I need to find a place where darkness prevails. While exploring, the shadow creature noticed something that favored him. His eyes flashed with malevolent anticipation as he discovered that this world was called Thraxis Nocturne because it was a planet plunged into shadows. The dark entity smiled malevolently as he realized that this planet could provide the darkness needed to revitalize his power. Ha 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 ha! Thraxis Nocturne, a feast of darkness awaits me! With amazing speed, the shadow creature launched itself towards the planet, traversing space with great speed. Awamo and Ewen, aware of his intentions, followed closely, determined to stop any attempt by the shadow creature to plunge into the darkness of the planet. As the creature approached Thraxis Nocturne, the darkness of the planet seemed to intensify, as if responding to its presence. The planet's nighttime atmosphere shone with a faint luminosity, offering a fascinating contrast to the surrounding stars. Ewen, we must prevent the creature from being filled with dark power. If she succeeds, it will be even more difficult to stop her. Understood, Oamo. We'll not allow the darkness of this planet to fall into the hands of that entity. The shadow creature descended on Thraxis Nocturne with a terrifying impetus. As she approached, the darkness seemed to take her in, enveloping her with a gloomy welcome. The shadow creature began to absorb the darkness of the planet, its twisted form vibrating with a new energy as it filled with the essence of Thraxis Nocturne. Ha 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 ha! Yes, this darkness will strengthen me. Nothing can stop me now. Awamo and Ewen, wasting no time, headed towards the shadow creature, determined to stop its advance before it became unstoppable. The battle in the shadows of Thraxis Nocturne was about to take a very drastic turn. We cannot allow this darkness to completely corrupt this creature. We must stop her before she becomes invincible. Your previous strategy was effective, Awamo. Let's keep working together to counter his power. Deep in the shadows of Thraxis Nocturne, the intense presence of the absorbing shadow creature did not go unnoticed by the most powerful warriors on the planet. Turles, Bardock, Raditz, Frieza, and his brother Cooler felt the darkness increasing around them and, with a mixture of amazement and concern, headed toward the epicenter of the threat. Something's not right. The darkness in this place is getting denser. Whatever it is, we cannot let it threaten Thrax's Nocturne. Let's investigate. The warriors moved nimbly across the gloomy terrain, advancing towards the source of the darkness. As they got closer, the atmosphere became heavier, as if the shadow itself wanted to resist their advance. The darkness is different. I feel a strange pressure. I'm not afraid of the dark, but this is unusual. Cooler, stay alert. Understood, Frieza. Let's find out what's going on. Suddenly, a wave of dark energy erupted before them, revealing the shadow creature that was absorbing the darkness of the planet. His twisted figure and malevolent aura were as evident as the threat he posed to Thraxis Nocturne. Warriors of this planet, his darkness feeds me. Soon I will be unstoppable. We won't let you destroy Thraxis Nocturne. Get ready, creature. The warriors went on the attack each unleashing their unique power against the Dark Entity. Turles unleashed his evil aura, releasing bursts of destructive energy. Bardock channeled his Saiyan fury into powerful blows, while Raditz and Cooler coordinated their attacks to create a symphony of destruction, Frieza intensifying the struggle. This creature doesn't know who he's up against. Your resistance is useless. Each blow only increases my power. The shadow creature, powered by the darkness of Thraxis Nocturne, absorbed attacks with defiant ease. Each impact seemed to strengthen rather than weaken it, plunging the warriors into the disturbing reality that they were facing an enemy that fed on its own darkness. It's not working. 
He's getting stronger and stronger. We need to change our strategy. We can't let it absorb all the darkness on the planet. While the warriors struggle to find an effective strategy, the shadow creature, with its distorted laughter, continued to absorb the darkness, becoming more and more powerful. The Battle of Thraxis Nocturne's survival was at its most critical, and the warriors knew that they had to find a solution before the dark entity became invincible. The dark aura released by the shadow creature enveloped the warriors of Thraxis Nocturne, gradually weakening them. The warriors struggled to stay on their feet as the entity's malevolent energy infiltrated their bodies, obscuring their vital forces. This is it. Too much. I can't let that defeat us like this. The warriors, despite their bravery, were overcome by the darkness emanating from the aura of the shadow creature. At that critical moment, when hope seemed to be fading, a heavenly light pierced the shadows. Owamo and Ewin, the angels charged with protecting Thraxis Nocturne arrived on the battlefield. The darkness emanating from this creature is breathtaking. We cannot allow it to take over this planet. Time to show these warriors how to fight true darkness. The angel spread his wings, and together with the god of destruction, they advanced towards the shadow creature, his presence radiating a luminosity that defied the malevolent nature of the dark aura. As it approached, the dark entity sensed the arrival of divine beings and turned to face the new threat. Ha 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 More insignificant beings! His light will be devoured by my darkness! Don't underestimate the power of light! Darkness cannot resist the true essence of creation! Awamo extended his hand, and a purifying light enveloped the battlefield, counteracting the dark effect of the creature's aura. Ewen, on the other hand, deployed the energy of destruction, creating a perfect balance between light and darkness. The shadow creature, for the first time, felt the pressure of forces that it could not easily absorb or resist. The conflict took a turn, and the battle became more intense as the angel and god of destruction faced the dark entity with a unique combination of light and destruction. The real struggle starts now. We'll protect Thrax's Nocturne from the darkness you represent. The fight between the angels and the shadow creature reached impressive levels, with bursts of energy illuminating the dark planet of Thraxis Nocturne. Meanwhile, the warriors, freed from the debilitating effects of the dark aura, watched the fight, hoping that their planet would not be destroyed. In the dark skies of Thraxis Nocturne, the stage was transformed into a cosmic battlefield, where divine light and malevolent darkness collided in an epic confrontation. Awamo and Ewin, the guardians of this planet, displayed their celestial power with a grace of precision that defied description. The glow of the purifying light emanating from Ewin and Awamo spread across the space, illuminating the shadows that the shadow creature was trying to grasp. Ewin and Awamo's every move was a ballet of divine energy, as they gracefully dodged the dark attacks encountered with unstoppable force. Awamo's wings shone with a resplendent light, like stars in the night, as he invoked the very essence of creation to repel the dark forces rising up against him. By his side, Ewin radiated an imposing presence, with his penetrating gaze fixed on the creature as it defying the darkness itself. The shadow creature, on the other hand, was fighting with an impressive ferocity, trying to resist the overwhelming power of Ewen and Awamo. Their dark attacks were launched like ravenous shadows, seeking to consume the divine light that surrounded them. However, every attack was countered by the impenetrable force of Ewen and Awamo, who remained firm in their purpose to protect the planet. The clash between light and darkness created a symphony of cosmic energy, with flashes of light and bursts of energy illuminating the firmament. The light will always prevail over the darkness! Your power is formidable, but it cannot resist the purity of creation! You can't stop me! I'm the very embodiment of darkness! Darkness can be powerful, but the real strength lies in balance, and we represent that balance. Ewan and Owamo continued to deploy their energy with amazing precision, creating light barriers that repelled the attacks of the shadow creature. Every movement of Ewin and Owamo was imbued with a divine elegance and grace while the creature struggled with the desperate ferocity. Our mission is to protect the harmony of the universe, and that includes protecting this planet from your darkness. You can't stop me. 
I'm inevitable. The shadow creature launched waves of dark energy, but Ewan and Awamo easily repelled them, maintaining an opposing presence in the midst of battle. Every blow of Ewan and Awamo resonated with the force of creation, while the creature struggled more and more desperately. The darkness can be a challenge, but our determination's unwavering. We'll not let you destroy this planet. Your power may be formidable, but it cannot equal the eternal light of the universe. The battle continued with a Ewan and Awamo and the shadow creature facing off in an epic clash between light and dark. In the midst of the struggle, Father Zeno, silently watched from his kingdom, perceived the magnitude of the conflict. With an imperceptible gesture, he decided to intervene, taking Ewan and Awamo to a mental plane where they could confront the shadow creature in a terrain beyond the physical. In a flash of dazzling light, Awamo and Ewan were transported to an ethereal realm, where the laws of the universe twisted and blurred. Where are we, Ewan? We have entered the realm of the mind, a place where reality is molded according to the will of the observer. Here the real battle be fought in the deepest corners of our being. While Awamo and Ewan were transported to a mental plane by Father Zeno, the shadow creature continued its fierce assault against the warriors of Thraxis Nocturnae. Turles, Bardock, Raditz, Frieza, and Cooler, the most powerful warriors on the planet, rose up against the darkness that threatened to consume their home. The shadow creature, imbued with a dark and malevolent aura, hovered over them with an overwhelming presence. He distorted his energy, enveloping everything around him, tearing reality itself apart, and threatening to plunge the planet into an abyss of chaos. We won't let you destroy our home, shadow monster. We the warriors of Thraxis Nocturne are not afraid of the dark. We have faced much greater dangers than you, creature. We will fight together to protect our world. The shadow creature launched a powerful dark attack towards the warriors, but they responded with relentless ferocity. Turles, his eyes shining with determination, unleashed a shower of destructive energy, summoning the very essence of nature to channel it in a torrent of energetic attacks. Their powerful attacks cut through the darkness with devastating precision, creating dazzling explosions that lit up the planet's night sky. Bardock, with his fiery key and indomitable spirit, channeled his energy into a powerful attack. His fists were burning with a searing intensity as he launched a concentrated burst of energy towards the shadow creature, challenging its strength with its own. Bardock's attack resonated with the determination of an invincible warrior, willing to give everything for the protection of his world. Raditz and Cooler, united in battle, joined in a coordinated assault on the shadow creature. With fluid and coordinated movements, they launched bursts of energy from different angles, creating a barrier of attacks that surrounded their enemy. The shadow creature struggled to defend itself against the combined onslaught of the two powerful warriors, but its resistance was challenged by the determination and skill of Raditz and Cooler. Meanwhile, Frieza, with his golden form glowing with a golden aura, was preparing to unleash his full power against the shadow creature. His eyes shone with a cold and calculated determination as he focused his energy on a devastating attack. With a graceful and precise movement, Frieza unleashed a burst of golden energy that swirled with unparalleled destructive power, threatening to envelop the shadow creature in a mantle of fire and destruction. The battle escalated as the warriors of Thraxis Nocturne bravely faced the darkness that threatened their world. Every blow, every burst of energy, echoed through space, creating a spectacle of destruction and determination. Meanwhile, on the mental plane, Awamo and Ewan were engaged in a metaphysical struggle against Father Zeno, an omnipotent entity whose presence radiated an aura of indescribable power. Ewan and Awamo, aware of the gravity of the situation, desperately sought the intervention of Father Zeno to counter the threat of the shadow creature. However, to their surprise, Father Zeno solemnly informed them that they could not intervene directly, since the balance of the universe had to be kept intact even in times of crisis. Awamo and Ewan, although unhappy with Father Zeno's decision, understood the importance of respecting the laws of the cosmos. With determination, they plunged even deeper into the metaphysical struggle, using all their ingenuity and power to find a solution to the crisis unfolding in Thraxis Nocturne. As a confrontation on the mental plane reached its climax, Awamo and Ewan found themselves face to face with the imposing Father Zeno. His figure radiated an indisputable authority. 
but also an aura of mystery that aroused restlessness in the Ewin and Awamo. Awamo, with his usual serenity, broke the tense silence that filled the ethereal space. Father Zeno, he began in a firm but respectful tone, could it be you that were you the one who sent the shadow creatures to destroy the planets? Father Zeno, with an unflappable expression, nodded slowly. I did it for the good of the universe, he replied calmly. Although his voice resonated with the power that shook Ewan and Wamo, sometimes drastic measures must be taken to preserve the cosmic balance. Ewan, with a flash of indignation in his eyes, could not contain himself anymore. But that doesn't justify the chaos and destruction you've unleashed, he exclaimed, his voice echoing with unshakable determination. There are other ways to restore balance without resorting to violence and darkness. Father Zeno observed the God of Destruction and his angel with a penetrating gaze, as if he were evaluating their words and their posture. Your compassion is admirable, but sometimes it's necessary to sacrifice a few pieces to save the entire board, he said in an enigmatic tone. Awamo and Ewan exchanged determined glances. Although they respected Father Zeno's authority, they knew that they had to follow their own principles and convictions. With courage, they prepared to challenge the omnipotent being in front of them, willing to fight for what they believed was right, even if it meant facing the divinity itself. The air on the mental plane was charged with tension, as Owamo and Ewan prepared to face Father Zeno. Their divine auras collided in a show of titanic forces, as Ewan and Owamo prepared to challenge the supreme being in front of them. Awamo, with his heavenly book in hand, looked at Father Zeno with determination. Father Zeno, although we respect your authority, we cannot allow you to continue with this destruction, he stated firmly. We'll fight for peace and balance in the universe, even if it means standing up to you. Father Zeno, with an impenetrable calm, nodded in recognition. Your courage is admirable, but you will not be able to stop me, he replied calmly. The fate of the universe is in my hands, and I'll do whatever it takes to preserve its balance. Without further words, the battle began with a burst of divine energy. Awamo unleashed his celestial power, summoning rays of light that he threw against Father Zeno, while he went through waves of energy with determination. However, Father Zeno showed impressive resilience, deflecting every attack with surprising ease. The fight went on for what seemed like an eternity, with Ewan and Awamo and Father Zeno trading punches and counter punches in a cosmic dance of power and skill. Every movement was imbued with a supernatural force, while the mental plane trembled under the intensity of his conflict. However, as time passed, Awamo and Ewan began to feel the weight of their opponent. Father Zeno's power was overwhelming, and every blow Ewan and Awamo received weakened them even more. Despite their bravery and determination, it seemed that they were fighting against an impossible to defeat force. Awamo, panting from the effort, looked at his companion with concern. Ewan, we can't go on like this, he admitted sincerely. Father Zeno's too powerful for us. Ewan, though exhausted, nodded determinedly. I know, Awamo, but we can't give up, he replied firmly. We must keep fighting for Thrax's Nocturne and for all beings in the universe. With a final effort, Ewan and Awamo gathered their forces to launch a final attack against Father Zeno. However, the Supreme Being easily overcame them, deflecting his power with a contemptuous gesture. Father Zeno looked at Ewan and Awamo with a mixture of admiration and regret. They're brave, but their struggle has come to an end, he solemnly declared. Accept your defeat and let fate take its course. With a resigned sigh, Awamo and Ewan surrendered to Father Zeno's overwhelming strength. Although they had fought with all their heart and soul, they knew that they could not defeat the Supreme Being in front of them. Father Zeno, with a compassionate look, looked at them benevolently. Rest now, my brave creations, he said gently. His bravery will be remembered throughout the universe. Father Zeno, with an unflappable expression, extended his hand towards the exhausted Ewan and Awamo. In an instant, a powerful burst of cosmic energy emanated from his palm, enveloping Awamo and Ewan in a dazzling radiance. Ewan and Awamo screamed in agony as Father Zeno's energy enveloped them, feeling every fiber of their being being torn apart under the relentless power of the Supreme Being. Their bodies imbued with divine light were slowly consumed in the maelstrom of energy, fading little by little into the aether of the cosmos. 
Awamo and Ewan fought with all their might to resist the cataclysm that engulfed them, but it was useless. The power of Father Zeno surpassed them in every respect, and they were soon reduced to mere shadows of their former glory. With the last gasp, Awamo and Ewan exploded, leaving body parts all over the mental space, dissipating into cosmic nothingness while their essence merged with the universe. At that precise moment, we return to the earthly plane, with a fierce battle between the most powerful warriors of Thraxus Nocturnae and the shadow creature was reaching its climax. Bursts of energy and thunderous crashes echoed in the air, while Bardock, in the middle of the combat, glimpsed Awamo and Ewan, who were lying unconscious on the ground, enveloped in a halo of divine light. Surprise and dismay were reflected on the faces of the warriors, who momentarily stopped their frantic struggle upon realizing the situation. Bardock, his eyes wide open, watched in horror as Ewan and Awamo's bodies began to shake, emanating flashes of energy that increased in intensity with each passing second. A tense silence enveloped the battlefield as everyone watched the scene in disbelief. Suddenly, a heart-rendering explosion echoed in the air, making the earth and sky tremble. Bardock and the other warriors were thrown back by the force of the explosion, protecting themselves as best as they could from the shockwave that was spreading around them. When the afterglow of the explosion faded, what was left was a smoking crater where Awamo and Ewan once stood. The warriors slowly stood up, stunned by what they had just witnessed, as the shadow creature, now shrouded in an even denser darkness, prepared to lash out again before the protecting warriors of Thraxus Nocturnae. Bardock clenched his fist determinedly, feeling a mixture of sadness and fury burn inside him. He knew that they must continue the fight, not only for the honor of their planet, but also in memory of the brave fallen guardians. With a war cry, the warriors rushed into combat again, determined to avenge the loss of their comrades and protect their home from the darkness that threatened to consume it. After the devastating explosion that killed Awamo and Ewan, the warriors of Thraxus Nocturne gathered in a circle, still stunned by what had happened. Bardock, with a gloomy look, broke the silence with a grave tone. Damn it! What the hell just happened? Turles, frowning, shook his head in disbelief. I don't know, but we can't let this sacrifice be in vain. We need to get this thing over with once and for all. Raditz, with his fist clenched, furiously nodded determinedly. You're right! Awamo and Ewan gave their lives to protect this planet. We cannot disappoint his sacrifice. Frieza, with his usual impassive expression, spoke in a cold and calculated tone. The death of Ewan and Awamo should not be in vain. We must unite and concentrate our efforts on defeating that shadow creature. Cooler, with a serious look, added determinedly, We are facing an unprecedented threat, but if we fight together, we can overcome it. Let's do it for the honor of Thrax's Nocturne, for the legacy of our brave comrades. Bardock nodded solemnly, his jaw tense with determination. So, are we in agreement? We'll fight together until the end and avenge our fallen. The warriors nodded in agreement, sharing a look of determination and unity. With their hearts filled with determination, they prepared to face once again the darkness that threatened their home. As the warriors prepared to face the shadow creature again, a fierce determination burned in their hearts. Turles, feeling the energy of the battle, was the first to unleash his power. It's time to show them our true power! With a powerful scream, Turles wrapped himself in an aura of energy. Her dark hair turned golden and her eyes shone with a dazzling intensity. The energy of the Super Saiyan emanated from his being, infusing strength and determination into his entire being. Raditz, inspired by Turtle's example, followed suit. It's my turn! With a burst of energy, Raditz's dark hair bristled, turning golden just like his brother's. His key increased dramatically, emanating a commanding presence that filled the battlefield. Seeing the transformation of his comrades, Bardock also joined the fray. I can't stay behind! With a battle cry, Bardock unleashed all his power. His fiery aura enveloped him in a higher golden glow. His energy increased to astronomical levels, propelling him towards a higher form of his race. Frieza, observing the transformation of the Saiyans, did not want to be left behind. The time has come to show my true strength! With a burst of energy, Frieza transformed into his golden form of maximum power similar to 100% full power, his body radiating a golden glow. 
His power multiplied several times, turning him into an unstoppable force that rivaled the sunlight itself. Cooler, feeling the energy surrounding him, decided to join the fight with all his might. It's time to unleash my true potential! With a flash of energy, Cooler transformed into his metallic form, his body glowing with a metallic luster. His stamina and power increased exponentially, making him an invincible force that would defy even the gods. With their transformations complete, the warriors of Thraxxus Nocturne once again faced the shadow creature with renewed determination and a power that eclipsed any darkness. In the skies of Thraxxus Nocturne, the battle continued as the transformed warriors faced off against the shadow creature, a being whose dark power threatened to devour everything in its path. With each of the warriors unleashing their full potential, the cosmos trembled under the force of their epic showdown. The golden aura of Turles, Raditz, and Bardock, combined with the imposing presence of Frieza and Cooler in their transformed forms, formed a dazzling spectacle in the night sky. Energy flickered around them, lighting up the darkness with golden and silver flashes as they prepared for the final showdown. The shadow creature, sensing his power of his adversaries, emanated a rumbling roar that echoed through the planet. His dark form seemed to twist and distort as he prepared for the final assault. It's time to end this once and for all! With a battle cry, Turles lunged forward. His speed increased by his Super Saiyan form. The shadow creature responded with an onslaught of dark energy, but Turles nimbly dodged it, moving with astonishing speed across the battlefield. Raditz and Bardock followed Turles' lead, attacking with relentless ferocity. Their blows echoed in the air, each one charged with the strength of his determination and the desire to protect his home planet. The shadow creature's attacks were swift and fierce, but the Saiyans deftly dodged them, responding with even more powerful blows. Father, let's keep the pressure on this thing! We can't let it destroy our home! I know, we're not going to allow this monster to destroy Thrax's Nocturne! Our power is more than enough to end it! That's right! You taught us to fight with courage and determination! We'll not back down before this creature is destroyed! Take this! The shadow creature dodged Bardock's attack with agility, launching its counterattack with its sharp claws. Careful, father! Don't worry about me. I'm more than ready for this. And take this too! Raditz's attacks hit the shadow creature hard, but it quickly recovered and counterattacked with a surge of dark energy. Damn, this thing's tougher than I thought. We can't give up now. Our planet depends on us. You're right. Let's show you what we're capable of. The two Saiyans launched into the air attack once more with renewed determination. Their blows echoed in the air, each one charged with the strength of his determination and the desire to protect his home planet. The shadow creature, although resistant, was overcome by the ferocity of the Saiyans. Turles, with his golden hair flowing behind him, launched a quick series of precise punches, each one carrying with it the power of his transformation into Super Saiyan. His movements were fluid and graceful, as if he were dancing around his enemy, dodging every attack with impressive agility. There's no escape for you, monster! Your darkness can't compete with the power of the Super Saiyan! With a battle cry, Turles lashed out at the shadow creature, striking with overwhelming force. Every blow resounded in the air, shaking the battlefield with its power. The shadow creature was fighting desperately, but its attack seemed weak compared to Turles' ferocity. Meanwhile, Raditz and Bardock were continuing their assault on the shadow creature. Their attacks were coordinated and precise, each complementing the other in a deadly dance of destruction. The shadow creature found itself increasingly cornered, unable to cope with the combined might of the Saiyans. Come on, father! We know we can stop this thing! I know, Raditz. Let's keep pushing until there's nothing left of this creature. With renewed determination, the two Saiyans redoubled their efforts, launching a series of devastating attacks against the shadow creature. Each blow echoed in the air, carrying with it the weight of his determination and the desire to protect his own planet. Frieza and Cooler were watching the battle intently from a distance, their cold gazes evaluating every move of the Saiyans and the shadow creature. As the fight intensified, they noticed with increasing concern how the shadow creature began to gain more strength, releasing a dark energy that threatened to destabilize this situation. It seems that the things are getting more complicated than I expected. Yes, the shadow creature seems to be gaining ground. If we don't intervene soon, we could face an even more dangerous situation. With a cold determination, Frieza and Cooler exchanged a glance before heading towards the battlefield. His presence made itself felt immediately. 
His overbearing aura flooded the area as they prepared to face the shadow creature. Looks like we need to intervene before things get out of control. I agree. We cannot allow the shadow creature to wreak more havoc on our planet. With surprising speed, Frieza and Cooler launched into action, deploying all the power in an effort to contain the shadow creature. His attacks were precise and devastating, each blow carrying with it the weight of his determination and the desire to protect his home. However, the shadow creature was not going to be easily defeated. With a thunderous scream, he split into four separate beings, each one darker and more malevolent than the last. The earth trembled under their weight as they advanced towards the warriors, ready to unleash their fury on them. It seems that this creature has more tricks up its sleeve than we thought. It doesn't matter, we have our own tricks. Well guys, this is all for today's chapter. I hope you liked it and it was to your liking. Now don't forget to leave your powerful like Supreme God level, comment and subscribe. Now without further ado, see you in a new video. Until next time. Oh, <laughs>